Um, and there I am. I, I, I'm as pleased as punch that I've got now three female turkeys to go for. Go. Baldrick's not, now three female turkeys. Oh. <laughs> um, the thing is, he, he doesn't like female turkeys anyway. He just loves me. So um... <laughs> I like your coincides bit in the letter, by the way. Go on. Well, that's what it says, coincide. What does that, what are you all about? Coincide. Not coincide. Co-inside. Co-inside. Yep. Two words. Hmm? Two words. Two words. <coughs> Ooh, ah. Two words, yeah. Co-inside. Who are, Andy? <laughs> it, it, sometimes you make mistakes, okay, Pete? Oh, we all do. We all do. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, actually, actually, I, actually, Pete, I've got to be honest with you. I did the um I, I did my column for the newspaper today, which which obviously I've sent you. Hmm. And um and the weirdest thing was with that, I sent it before I proofread it. Oh. Uh, but hang on a minute, it was fine. It, it, I always seem to have problems with articles where, you know, I, I go through them and it's like this problem and it's that problem. But for once, it was fine. I was happy with that. I phoned, I phoned my mum and I thought, right, I don't, I'm struggling with this piece, right? So I didn't let my mum know. So I said, you, you, you went to this school. And she said, yeah. And I said, oh, give me some information about the school. And I thought, right, that's good. Um, I just put what my mum said uh, down to the fact that when she was when she was about um, six years old, she used to like having sandwiches made with butter with a cow on them. A cow <laughs> on the label. So this was 1951. So there we go. Right. Anyway, we, we, we have actually fully started now. So we're going to we're going to get everybody's news other, other than coincides. Right. Um, we're gonna leave Pat for a moment, okay? Because Pat, you've got to, you've got to flash, uh, you've got to flash us the information from that in a moment, but not yet. Right, David, oh. any news from you this week? No, sorry. It's so you don't ever have to apologise, um, uh, David. Anne. No, I'm not been useless this week. Done nothing. Well, I've had one of those weeks. Well, Margaret needs <laughs> not to that I do much anyway. M Margaret needs to apologise if she hasn't got any news. <laughs> um, well, somebody told me about some, and I've oh. looked it up actually, major Roman bathhouses. Revealed, oh, not again. Revealed in Carlisle. Oh, yeah. This was on um, th this month in May. Oh. Um, and they found who used this huge bathhouse is not clear, but finds included 34 carved intaglios more than 100 hairpins, fine glass beads within the drains, as well as vaulting tubes, hinted to rich non-military clientele. It was first discovered in 2017, mm -hmm. but uh, they've had loads of volunteers um, working there as we speak. Oh, I want to have your babies, Margaret. We're going to have to find this in the break, OK? okay. I, I, gotta, I, I gotta get an image of this. <laughs> um, don't don't take it personally, uh, Margaret. But you mentioned something like that, and, and I lust after you. That's it. End of story. <laughs> um, well, no, I'm actually interested in the archaeology. I'm just cheap, Margaret. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an update uh, before we go on to Peter, and then we go on to um, Pat. I'll give you an update. Um, uh, uh, Adam Adam was really busy today, so um, he might be joining me tomorrow. Uh, Peter's had a really bad weekend and um, he's not very well, so that's why he's not joining us today. He's not. I've I've said that he had a went on a drinking binge, but that's not exactly accurate. And I, I had a I had a really nice message um, off Gina. Um, it was it was personal, but I'll I'll read out a tiny little bit of it to sort of give you an update about Drina, um, the, the non personal stuff if I can get to it, and uh, if if my if if my thingy will work, come on, come on, work, work, right, okay, um, nearly, nearly, okay, Drina, 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 and Drina, right, let's let's just see where it is, draft, no, not there. Um, archive, right? Good, Drina. Okay, I, I did, I did have something to read out from Drina, but I think it's not. Uh, oh, here we go, Drina. It's basically um, I wrote a personal reply, which I'm going to read out. But 
she thanked us for sending the personal stuff to her and and at this minute she's quite happy to um view what's going on on youtube so i'm sending a the, the link for youtube uh, which i've got here so i'll send a link for this class afterwards uh, so if anyone wants to say hello she did watch last week so just say hello drina hello drina um we are missing you she's had a load of books um sent to her by her son to read so she's sort of on the romans and stuff so i've sent her a copy of one of my books um which 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 we've sent out to her today and she's sending uh you all all her love she sends all her love to uh to you guys and appreciating um uh, you know you, you guys helping her out with different things and, I'm, and i know you have so that that's good i'm i've read that out from drina uh, so she's saying thanks. Right. Uh, uh, who else? I, I did say Peter. And then Pat, I, you've rehearsed your bit because it's it's pretty big in my. And, and I want you to be able to show up to the screen. Not yet. But but we'll do Peter first. Peter, uh, as you know, tomorrow we, we're doing flat home. My flat home file. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm. So we're good. we'll do the full file tomorrow. Anyone who wants to join us at 11 o'clock, we're doing flat home. We've got a file <coughs> with stuff that's never, ever been seen. And it's, um, well, not seen for a long time. So that's that's what we're going to be doing um, tomorrow at 11 o'clock, if anyone's interested. But any news from you before we go on over to Pat? Not really. No, I, I was going to ask you, but the, please, the uh, please. hot water um, spring in taps well. Was that used by the Romans? Do you want do you want the do you want the real answer? Yeah, I, I wrote about it in um I, I, I wrote you... about it in my in my book Romans in South Wales, and I did add, oh hang on a minute. If I can quote directly from my own book, um uh, if I if I can find if I can find where springs are and so on, if you give me a moment, Peter, and I'll be able to answer it. Uh water, water, wells. Page 88. Now, I think that's, yeah, page 88. So I, I should get straight to it. Right. OK, I've answered that in my own book. Right. So. Um, da, 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 right. OK. Da, hang on. OK. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, now over to Taft's well. Archaeology Company had the pleasure of being given the contract by Ron the and Taft to clean out the well house in the spring in 2016. Although we were only there for a year, as the trust established for the site took over our commendable work. Unknown sources add to this rumour about Taft's wells. Oh, sorry, the S. In other words, there's more than one well at Taft's wells, but people don't like you saying Taft's wells. But that's nothing to do with this. Um, that after a devastating flood recorded in 1799, they only tended to record the bad ones and not the early flood. That impressive masonry adjoined what seemed to be that <clears throat> of a well of questionable description were viewed. After all, we are slowly building up evidence in the era of substantive Roman occupation. Like many things and locations in Britain before the Romans arrived, the site at Taft's well would have been common knowledge as at the Bath Spring. It is not less possible that the Roman established a structure of Taft's well to take advantage of the rich properties that the waters have now proven to hold. So that's the answer, Pete. Okay. Uh, and that, that, Pete, is all we know. That's okay. it. Don't know anymore. Right, okay. So what we're gonna do is this is now, oh, Pat, don't let us down. This is a huge build-up. Right? Oh. Uh, 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 first of all, show us. There's right. the Western uh, Mail. Okay, yeah. we want to um, see the image first. Show it's us the from image. from Tuesday. Yeah. There's the big words there. there are the words. Oh, one of the greatest fossil finds made in Wales. Ever. Mm -hmm. Ever. Yeah, yeah. There's only one other place <laughs> that the fossils are like this. It is in Morocco. Oh, no wow. Nowhere else in the world. Have we got an image of these things? Go on. Well, they made a drawing. Oh, go on. Because they're mostly sponges and soft things. They're very tiny. They're only, you know, five mineral meters. I mean, very small. Okay, here's the... Uh, uh, Bring it up. Oh. Yeah, that's what they think it looks like. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. in stone, you know, because it's a rock yeah. fossil. And yeah. of course, it's a soft body. So, I mean, you can't just lift it out. Um, no. 
it's quite a lot of work. These people have spent a hundred days there researching, and they get help from um, Cambridge, Sweden, and China to examine some of their finds. They send a, a rock, I guess, mm -hmm. and uh, sure. they they so they put an acid and try to you know reduce it down so they can see what it looked like. You know, yeah. So um, yeah, it says um. It's one of the very rare sites where soft tissues and complete organisms are preserved rather than just hard parts like shells and bones. So and that's 460 million years old. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was, it was at that time there was changes going on in evolution. And uh, yeah. they were evolving and changing. So there were some soft bodies and some hard bodies and some exoskeletons and they were working on changing <laughs> rapidly yes can you can you please tell us where this was again well it's a secret spot <laughs> oh come on it's in Wales, but Wales, it's a big place. they're calling it castle rock but the yeah. two residents uh, that are doing the research actually live in um Clad did no Clad Let's see what it was. Critical, Oh, that's in the north. That's in the north, not in Landrid, God. That's in the north. Yeah. North of Wales. Yeah. Go on. Does that sound right? Yeah. Wait. Where did it say? So I know I was trying to think, where is it? Where is it? Oh, dear. Anyhow, um, I thought it was in the middle. Because it's they keep talking about mid Wales. Oh, here it is. Clan Drin Dodd residence. Ah, yes. Clan Drin Dodd, yes. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's in the middle, middle of Wales. Is yeah. that in the middle? Yes. Yeah. yes. yeah. Okay. Yes. Of course, they say it was covered with, you know, a sea, and that's how it, come, it was laid down there, four hundred and sixty million years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was preserved in the salt water. Yeah, in mm -hmm. the ocean that was there mm -hmm. a long time ago. Yes. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So they say yeah. it's worms, sponges, barnacles, starfish, and primitive horseshoe crab. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oldest examples of more <laughs> modern looking animals, including a creature that looks like an insect and may be distantly related to them. So, uh, researchers, oh, yes, it's researchers in Sweden, they were the ones who dissolved some of the rock in hydrofluoric acid and extracted minute fragments of organic remains that show cellular level detail. So, wow. Yes, mm. yes, big bio. <laughs> A great Ordovician bio Ordovician, the Ordovician period, yes. Yes, biodiversification event when animals were hard skeletons were evolving rapidly. Yes. Shale okay. type stuff. Yeah. I, I think the comparison yeah. is um human humanity going through a transitional period, but that's another joke. Yeah, right, the, okay then. I really the appreciate that, Pat. Yeah, try again. There's the stones. That's what they see. Oh, nice. The stone. Yeah. Ah. Long arms like that. And there's the two that've been there for a hundred days. <laughs> how did they suddenly become revealed? <laughs> yes. How they did they say. become revealed? Is that in the article? No. Uh -uh. Uh. No. They just uh, discovered it and then started doing it and then started sending information. I think went into a mark, you know, Nature magazine. Yeah, Journal of Na Nature, Ecology, and Evolution. Wow. Uh, and so, somebody said, was that in Landud? No, online. And I've got, got to say that that was in uh, Landrindod. That's it. Uh, That's Land, it. Dran, mm. Wells. But mind you, Landrindod Wells is a big place. So there we go. Yeah. Well, they didn't I, say well, Landrindod Wells. They didn't say Wells. They said Landrindod. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Anyway, I really appreciate that, Pat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Round of applause. <laughs> oh, I thought you. you'd all know about it because it was on the, no, of the imagination no, going. <laughs> no, no. The the, pro the problem is these days. These days, it's just like there's so much stuff going on um, that you know it's really difficult to find out where the news is. Where the news is these days, and and that that's a big problem. Um, can I just can I as I've got you all online um, <clears throat> because because I'm actually. Uh, where, where is it? I, I got, I've got a wonderful artifact around here somewhere that uh, um, I, I've got to start. Um, I've got to start for publishing. Uh, if, if I could find it a moment, um, 
I don't seem to have it around, but um, I, I will find it. And it's it's basically um, it's basically in a bag around you somewhere. And I will find it and I will show you to after the break. It's a medieval artifact and it might be um, some evidence from the Battle of Cowbridge, um, which which I which I discovered back in 1994. Uh, and I've not published it yet, but I will publish it and um, I will show you that in the break. Also, we've got to look at that Roman site as well. We, we've got to, we're going to crack on now. So uh, thanks for that, Pat. Mm -hmm. uh, we're cracking on and here we go. So on the screen, uh, we are starting now. We're looking at some great images um, and hopefully uh, we can go to these. Um, right. Unfortunately, what we're going to do, we're going to go, we're going to quickly, quickly go. We're not going to go through all the images because there's quite a lot of them, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. There are so many images. Um, we will be visiting Ireland and we'll be visiting this site, as we mentioned last week. Right. So today, today we, we've got, we've got a look. At, How on earth could they move that? <laughs> ah, Pete. Good. Let, let's not let's not mention any more about that. But one okay. one one thing one thing I will mention. Thank you for uh, getting the letter. If you could drop that off, uh, Peter. Just a little bit of uh, doodah. Those that have paid paid their money for the classes so far. Thank you very much. Obviously, class monies are now due this week. Um, fifty pounds, and that will keep us going for the next two months. So again, fifty pounds due this this week for the next two months. I do believe that some of you have already paid, and thank you very much for that. So we're going to crack on now. We're going to fully crack on. Um, and how did they move that? What what a what a big what a big question. How did they move that? And okay, let let's just move on. We've got loads of slides. How did they move that? Now the question is. Did they move them at all? Right. Let's just go back. And we, we've got five sites that we'll be looking at today. And this site is in Ireland. So I've got I've got to get my notes up on the screen. We, we've got five people uh, watching online, which is which is absolutely outstanding, which is good. And we've got you guys. Um, and the difference is with you guys is you can actually take part. And the ones on on YouTube uh, are, are just um, are, are just watching proceedings so i would like to i, I would like to um, introduce the reason why one of the things uh, one of the things last week we we were interested in what we mentioned somebody mentioned last week about a a, a, a tomb uh, in ireland that has a capstone which weighs 100 tons oh no i'm sorry 150 tons I wanted to say 100 tons, it's more plausible, but 150 tons in Ireland. Um, and I just I just thought that's what I wanted to do this week. And it's basically we look at this and then we compare this with uh, with two other sites. We compare it with Kefin Bryn on the Gower in West Wales um, or um, South West Wales. And we look at Tinkinswood Burial Chamber as well. And we look at. Uh, we look at uh, two other sites as well that are related to what we mentioned last week. So let's let's uh, let, let's let's think about this. And this 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 site is known as the Browns Hill Portal Tomb, and it's in County Carlow Island. The Browns Hill Portal Tomb, County County Carlo Island. Now, one of the things when we'd be looking at Ireland, I've never got a map on there, and you don't know where these things are. And there it is on the map near Dublin. Um, and this is one of those portal tombs. Now, you know, when we looked at these um, the other week, we we mentioned we we mentioned about court tombs, and we mentioned about uh, portal tombs. And we, we mentioned about passage tombs and we mentioned about wedge tombs as well. Portal tombs themselves. Uh, this is one of the famous, um, this is one of the famous portal tombs in Ireland. Very, very famous. And 
one of the descriptions of what a portal tomb is, and there's lots of them in Ireland, and portal tombs, how many portal tombs are there in Ireland? Well, when we look at the classifications last week, we said there are about 200 portal tombs in Ireland, probably more than any other comparison of an area anywhere in Britain. And very much, there's a lot more in Ireland than lots of other places on the planet. What are portal tombs? Well, we did mention last week, but we only mentioned them briefly. Portal tombs, the principal characteristics of a portal tomb are a single chamber underneath there, a single chamber of rectilinear design. Well, you know, it, it's, it's fairly chunky, They're fairly rectilinear, okay? Usually narrowing towards the rear. Well, it is narrowing. Yeah, having an entry between two tall portal stones set inside the line of the side stones and covered by a capstone often of enormous size. It's pretty big, isn't it? It's pretty, pretty big. Ooh, there's the entrance. Bingo. Um, poised high above the entrance and sloping down towards the rear of the chamber. There we go, as we just mentioned. The capstone is frequently raised clear of the side stones and rests on the portal stones and back, st back side stones or back stones. So in other words, what we're saying, it sometimes looks balancing. Well, if you have a little look at that, it looks balancing. Look at that. Look, uh, it's balancing on a couple of stones, but it's not always, it's not on top of them directly, on top of the one on the left. Uh, and that one there is that that's that's what we just mentioned, it's slightly out. So look at that, it's out. So this is this is one of the things, Peter, right? Uh, Peter said, how did they move this thing? Pete, have you changed your mind? Don't answer that question. Well, no, I still don't know how they can possibly move it without um, mechanical means like we have now. But did they move it at all? Mm, stop, don't well, say any more, Peter. done to get it on uh, top of those other ones. Pete, Pete let, let's rest the idea. Let's settle the idea a minute. Let's just sort of think this is the one on the gower right and look at that there it's not even resting on some of those it's not resting on that either um and and one of the one of the things about the one of the things about this we've got to we could talk a little bit more about the portal tombs uh, and then we need to look a little bit about this the browns hill portal tomb um you it goes frequently beneath the great capstone is a small cover resting on the sides and back stone, and in this case, the rear end of the principal caps rests on the second cover rather than on the back stone. So what we're talking about, we're talking about other stones, other stones involved, you know, not all not involved at this one, but there's different descriptions, different ways of looking at it. Um, and, and one of the things about this is that there's loads of different ways of thinking about these. these. And usually there is a mound uh, that is associated with these monuments uh, uh, and particularly the mound that is in regards to this one right there's a mound around this set in a little bit of gully surrounded by all these goats uh, there's usually a mound that sort of rises up to them or is set in a setting of stones that's a portal uh, that's a portal too um, but what I want to do is I want us to look at this in particular it's known as the brown hill portal tomb and again it's there near Dublin there it is and, and again to give you an idea of the scale look at that lady there um well I, I she never found that child it got lost inside it never found it ah uh, no um so and and you're looking at this and I'm loving this and look at that Pete one big stone a little head is a little pinprick in regards to that big stone so this dates to approximately a well, whopping 6,000 years ago. How long ago was that? Well, uh, Pete, you've lived on this planet for 70 years. I know it's a bit longer, Pete. Um, so Pete, with, within that little time that you lived on this planet, it's just a pinprick of those 6,000 years. Right? That's the the Andy. Oh, well done, you've just introduced. Uh, well, thank you for joining us, Andy, good. Uh, Andy, we are doing the Browns Hill Portal Tomb in County Island, and for for Andy, just for Andy's sake, there it is near Dublin. So uh, there it is absolutely huge, mega, massive stone. And one of one of the things I wanted to do today 
uh, you guys watching this and, and anybody else, you're thinking, well, we have a little bit more information. Well, I'm really interested in the size of the stones, right? Because if we if we took a lot more information about these stones, then we're not going to really be answering the question. So again, 4,000 years ago, Browns Hill Dolmen, County um, Carlo. What's the difference between a dolmen and a portal tomb? They're the same thing, right? Dolmen, big, big stone thingamajig, portal, big stone thingamajig. That's what they are. Now, this itself is classed as one of the most impressive megalithic monuments in Britain, right? Okay, I know it's in the south of Ireland, right? The two islands, let's forget politics. Between the two islands, this is by far the biggest capstone in the British Isles. Sorry, people in Ireland, Southern Ireland, you're part of the British Isles for this lecture, 1920. Uh, so within the two islands, this is 150 tonnes. It's absolutely massive, mega, huge, bang, whatever. Uh, one of the things what I used to, one of the things I used to say when we used to go to, um, uh, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go through quickly. When, when we used to go, when I used to go to this tomb, uh, th this capstone, I used to say that this is the biggest capstone in Western Europe. This is 50 tons. This is in South Wales, Tinkinswood Barrow Chamber. So this itself is basically a third of the weight of this one, huge. And so it is estimated to weigh in excess of 150 tons and is believed to be the heaviest capstone in Europe. Yes. So it outsmarts Tinkins with Burial Chamber. So when I used to take people there uh, years ago, I was wrong about the size. Um, Tinkins Wood is a third of the size of this one. But Tinkins Wood itself um, is um, the biggest capstone in Wales. This is the biggest capstone in Ireland. It is still not certain how it was raised. However, we are going to give one of the accepted theories. But it's my accepted theory. Sometimes I can be wrong. However, some people say that this was raised up there by a series of wooden rollers, ropes, man, animal power, aided by ramps or earth or stone, or one of the popular theories, aliens. Forget the aliens. It's really disrespectful to say that. However, humans were able to adjust the landscape to this stone. And I've used the word adjust because that's my theory. The stone had always been there. It was moved there by glaciation. Slap me across the face, could be wrong, but the stone was always there. And maybe the stones underneath were placed under the stone whilst the big stone sat on the landscape. Let's think about that theory. Leave it there, no comments, Pete. We're gonna do the theory and then you're gonna come back and you're gonna argue with me whether you agree with that theory or you want to go with the movement of this stone. So the Bronze Hill Dolmen, portal stone, um, tum tumulus, uh, is classified as a portal tomb by archeologists and there are nearly 200 of these across Ireland, more than anywhere in that sort of British Isles pantheon. The tombs generally consist of, as we know, these upright stones and a huge whopping capstone on top. Browns Hill has never been conclusively excavated. So what we can understand is this monument, and when I say conclusively excavated, there may have been some routings around which haven't been recorded. As we know, Margaret, those damnable barrow diggers didn't always give us their results, right? So we need to be very careful, tongue in cheek. I wonder if this had been excavated and maybe nobody would publish the results. I did have, I did have my finger in my mouth there rather than tongue in cheek. Uh, these include uh, from other portal tombs, for example, the type of evidence you might see at them. And the other two examples that we're gonna look at today, Giant's Grave on the Gower, which I've been to with Pat and Tinkered with Barrow Chamber, which I've been, obviously been to with Pete and maybe others watching. <laughs> Um, so the typical things that we can find in them are burnt and unburned human bone, pottery, statues of Lloyd George, flint artefacts, as well as personal items such as bone pins and beads. Um, and again, it doesn't look as big like that, does it? It doesn't really look as big, but it almost looks like a fantasy, a fantasy up there, but huge, immense. Do you know what? 
again, some of these images make the stones look bigger than they should be, right? Like this one on the Gower. This isn't doesn't weigh the same as the one at Browns Hill and Island. But I got to be, be honest with you, all these images that really gives an idea of the size of the stone. That's a bit blurred. It doesn't really show it, but this does. Um, maybe that's a tiny little woman and she's only three foot tall, but I, I, I you know, her children give it away that uh, mm. maybe uh, that's as big as it should be. One of the very few portal tombs that has been investigated by archaeologists was in County Clare in 2014 by uh, a, a certain lynch. Uh, at this site, the remains of 22 people were uncovered inside the tomb, including six adults and six children. Giving you an idea of what these may have been for, or maybe not giving you an idea what they were for at all. Of these bodies, only eight could be sexed, and these were equally split between males and females. And the one thing that we, the one thing that I always say about these, uh, is that they weren't just used for people who were important in society; they were used for everybody. They were, and, and they, maybe they were cleaned out, and maybe they were used for something else before they become chambers. Vis a vis, they have a long life. Remember, six thousand years ago. Unless we've got a time machine, we're never going to know. It appears that the dead were initially placed in the tomb as complete bodies and allowed to decompose. Other, other theories are that bodies were brought from elsewhere and then placed in them as the bodies had been de as the bodies had decomposed. Um, then, at a later date, certain parts uh, of the bodies were removed, uh, in particular the skulls and the long bones, and then placed elsewhere. We don't. We we think that. These were used for varying different reasons and various different purposes over a long period of time, maybe a thousand years. But people still visit them today. Those people are visiting them today. It's part of their landscape. That ch that child hidden there will always remember the time that she went uh, with the, to the dolmen with a mummy because we got a photograph. Um, the reasoning behind. All of this is really uncertain, although it may have been related to some form of ancestor worship where the dead via their skeletal remains continue to play a role in the daily lives of their descendants. When we use the word worship, when we use the word ritual and ceremony, I think Andy would agree completely with, with this. The words that we use today are completely different in how we in retrospectively think of the past. So ritual in the past is very different from somebody having ritual today like me with OCD. Uh, um, ceremony in the past is very different from the ceremony that we got with uh, King Charles being um, inaugurated as king on the weekend. Uh, so, you know, bring, um, having long bones carried with you, um, is, is that sort of, ancestor worship or is it um a sense of connection right um you know i've got relatives in my family that i absolutely adore and love to bits right and they're no longer with us and the way i keep them around is not by carrying a piece of human bone around with me is i mention them noah my granddad used to take me along around lots of castles and stuff when i was a child um, um my gra grandmother um Nan used to, um, both sets of my grandparents used to take me places. That's how I remember them. I don't carry their human bones around with me, right? Uh, but I, I might do today. Uh, mm. I might have a human bone with me and I might sort of touch that human bone and remember my relatives. But those four, those four uh, members of my, uh, those four um, grandparents uh, uh, were cremated. So, but... Some people have their cremated remains with them in their houses today. That's not very different from keep, keeping the long bone of one of your loved ones with you. But that's no different. So would we call that ritual? Would we call that obsession? In other words, what I'm trying to say is the past has different ways of broadcasting itself, offering itself. The, the past is yet a prostitute. You could do what you wish with a prostitute. Right. The past is the prostitute of the day. Right. It's to be interpreted and loved and abused and, and not abused in whatever way, shape or form. But the past is a country that we only visit by a postcard that's offered to us. We interpret it as we may from the postcard. 
Do you know what? When I was a child, I, I used to go abroad with my parents and, you know, oh, it's sunny day today, right? Um, I had a huge blister on my back and my mum popped it and, and I felt like there was a volcano erupting on my back. I didn't tell them the next day that we visited an archaeological site and I was well again and we had a beautiful meal. So from that one poster card, we get one impression. We have another postcard, we have another impression. We have another postcard, another impression. As time goes on, as time evolves. This is truly an ancient monument, Browns Hill Portal Tomb. It's located just outside the town of Carlo and it's easily accessible with a small car park present and path leading up to the monument. If you are ever in the area, you should definitely visit. And yes, visit these monuments, keep them alive. Pete, what we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna bring in um, a little sketch and then you're gonna agree or disagree with uh, that theory. You're gonna say no more. And then we're gonna go on to the next image and you're gonna agree or disagree with that one. Right. So before you, you, you have any banter with, and I'm really picking on Pete today, is why not? Um, so we got to uh, stop that there, right? Uh, and we're going to go a little bit of share, right? And I know, I, I know, um, I, I know, uh, God, what's her name? I know Kate's watching this um, online um, and she will say that she loves my sketches. Um, uh, oh, hang on a minute, stop. My sketch today will be unbelievably brilliant. I can't draw to save my life. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. Thanks, mate. You know, that, that's really good for my confidence. Um, right. OK, so what we've got, Pete, is that, um, Pete, what we've got, we've got a big slab, right? A glacial slab. Uh, and it's there on the landscape. It's a huge stone, right? This is in theory, right? So this huge stone itself is 10 tons in weight, right? You come across this stone and you think, right, I want to elevate it across the landscape, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to get rid of the stone there and we're going to draw the stone a little bit smaller, right? So we're going to elevate it across the landscape. So the best way of ele um, elevating the stone um, is to dig the earth away from the stone. But if you dig the earth away from the stone, then the stone falls into the ground and you kill half the people dig it. So what you do, right? You, you, you do something slightly different, right? What you do, you, uh, you undermine the stone on one of the corners, right? Um, and so you've got a pit developing, right? So what you then got, uh, you've got a stone that you dig into the ground from another corner, right? Um, and this idea comes from an archaeologist from North Wales called Francis Lynch, right, who's an eminent archaeologist in prehistory. So eventually what you've got, uh, you've got a stone um, that what our ancestors have done, they, they sort of done a little bit like this. Um, um, and you've got stones in the ground, several stones in the ground. Right. Uh, there we go. Uh, and the stone looks like it's been elevated above the little stones in the pit. Right. And, and this is best shown when we go to uh, the stone um, at um, Arthur's Coit. Uh, another guy, Coit, has anyone ever heard the word Coit? It basically means dolmen. It basically means um, capstone. Um, this is what we're talking about. Right. So. So one thing one thing that we're saying is eventually what you what you then find in the ground um, um, again, my crap drawings, what you then find is this capstone. Underneath the capstone are uh, these stones that support it in different areas. Nobody's been killed because you you undermine the stone at different parts, parts, right? And then eventually the stone looks elevated, right? The stone's not moved there at all. Right. I think I've given enough information about that, but we haven't done half the stone, which actually proved this, which proves it more than anything. Right. Um, so what we are going to do now and um, what I might what I might do is. Um, Bojack. Bojack. All oh, right, there he is. Um, but I'll have to bet Bojack into his girls in a minute. Right. So. Uh, um, so what, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to we're going to stop this sharing now.
Sharing's caring, isn't it, Pete? Um, and we're going to go back to my main screen. Um, if I can find out where I was, right? Um, and here we go. We're going to stop the share. Right, Pete, uh, what I've just said, right? Do you like the idea or um, do you, what, what do you think? Just, 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 just your clarity. Yeah. Well, that particular stone had it been left there from glacial action and they actually uh, dug underneath it, made uh, put put the uh, the supporting stones underneath before they dug out beneath it to make the uh, the uh, um, the the uh, graveyard as as you as you think. But the capstone at Tinkins Wood was quarried nearby. We know that. Right, right, Pete. Okay, this is a good point. So you didn't have to agree with my theory then for the one in Ireland. You didn't have to agree at all. Um, uh, but it made sense. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I'm okay with that. And, um, so what we're going to do now, Pete, we're going to look at another image now. I'm going to leave that there. We're going we're to leave that there. Um, and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you another image. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to open the door. I'm going to run outside now. I'm going to open the door so my um, uh, my 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 Baldrick can get in with his girls because he, he'd get very upset otherwise. Mm -hmm. Um. Right, so what we've got now is we've got this stone, right? Uh, you, uh, Peter, you talk to everyone about this a moment, right? And I will be as 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 quick as 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 a rat's uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'll be a moment. So talk Pete, to everybody. Uh, well, as I say, all we can say is that that stone was there in glacials after after the glacial times, after the ice age when the uh, glaciers melted and they decided to use it as a capstone and uh, left it in situ, but made the, uh, the support stones and the, uh, the uh, void below it. And they dug it out. All I'm saying is about Tinkins Wood, we know that it was actually, that capstone was actually quarried nearby. So uh, that obviously mm -hmm. is obviously much different to this one. Mm -hmm. How big is the one at Tinkies Wood? The, the one at Tinkies Wood must be about, oh, um, I think it's seven or eight tons in weight. About the same size as this one that's on the screen. Well, a bit, a bit like that, yes. yes. Yeah. Yes, I would say that, yes. Mm. Well, I'm back again. What weightage did you say? I said the one at Tinkies Wood was about eight, nine, nine to, about seven or eight tons, wasn't it? No, it's not. It's fifty tons. Oof. Fifty tons. Sorry. Ooh. Well, actually, can I can I just say one thing? Seven to eight tons. That's still a lot. Mm. It is. Uh, you know, I, let, let's just um, you know, uh, add... to to move it, it would take so much energy. And yeah. Where do they get it from? The you right, you say they may have used animals to move they it. Have but... That too, wouldn't they? Yeah. Now, the one that we're looking at now. Is, is known as this is actually there, there's there's a variety of different names given to this. This is Arthur Stone. Um, this is uh, Mine Petty. Uh, this is known as a quoit. That's a word that we haven't come across. It's known as a quoit, right? And this is this is this is this is actually a, a better image. I know this is uh, from quite some years ago. This is a better image. This shows it a little bit better. Um, it, it's slight exaggeration, slight angle, but you can actually see one clear thing that some of the stones there are not supporting the stone. And it's it's it, it's it's more condensed like that underneath, but there's water underneath and it's actually in a hollow. Um, that itself, it doesn't look it, but it's actually in a bit of a hollow. So they 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 quarry they quarried out um, the area bit by bit. Right. And they put those stones underneath. And, and the reason why this th theory from Francis Lynch sort of stands up um, is because if this was if this was placed on top of the stones, um, it, it, it would almost be that the, the, the capstone would sort of rest a little bit easier um, because the stones were placed underneath it. Um, the subsidence and all the other actions have meant that that the capstone is disin, disinherited from the stone underneath, right? Um, 
and again, this is this this one in Ireland is very different from this one. And although this like looks slightly slightly more exaggerated, um, and this this looks extremely this looks bigger. Um, th this this stone itself is for me. Um, I've been there. I I've been to this stone uh, with. I went with this stone with Pat. Can you remember Pat? Is she there? Pat, are you there? I can't see her. Can't see her. I'm here. Did you, did you, go, did you go to this? Did you go to this stone with me? Um, I don't think so. Well, there was one stone I went to. Where, is this in Gower? We're talking about. Yeah, this is the one on the Gower, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah, we walked all around the edge there and sat on it, looked at it, and you know, took pictures. Yeah, was, was, was this was this the day that um I had um I got my my car caught on a club and a, and the foot three people had to get out the car for me to move my car. <laughs> I don't know. It might yeah, it, it, it might yeah. have been. <laughs> yeah, it might it might have been. It might have been. And we were all sitting so, there and all of a sudden we said. Why don't we get out of the car? Maybe it'll move. <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. it. It did move. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did move. Right, let's, let's just move. My embarrassment. Um, but but this is we we wandered around there and and give the right description. Um, by the way, the Wikipedia uh, description of the site is quite crap because it doesn't even give any of the um, um, the description. So we're going to go with this one. It's also known as Mine Ketty, right? Um, That's that's like a, a Welsh uh, description for the word stone. So the ridge or the summit of, of Kefin Bryn, right? Kefin Bryn. There's loads of different names for it. Mine Ketty, Arthur Stone, Kefin Bryn. Um, it's it Lanridian. There we go. There's another one. Um, Kefin Bryn lies. That's Kefin the Bryn. Kefin Bryn. That that's the the mount there. Uh, right, a Neolithic burial ground. So there's more than one monument there, but we're interested in this one. Uh, a chambered burial, a chambered khan, coit, known in Welsh as Mine Ketty and in English as Arthur Stone, a well known and documented attraction for more than half a millennium. From, for 500 years, people have been talking about this. It has also attracted its fair share of colourful legends. Mine Ketty sits on the north wood facing, there we go, it faces north, northward facing slope of. Kefin Bryn, with spectacular views across um, Llanridian Sands. Now, have we shown you where this is? Hang on. A minute. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so if you look there, looking north, look towards Llanelli, looking north over uh, the, the sands there, which, which is quite treacherous as well, uh, and Carmarthen Bay. The, inspiration, the, the inspiring location alone helps to explain why men chose this location to build a chambered calm sometime around um, um probably about 5000 years ago if not earlier the when you say they built a chambered khan we're lying a bit in we because the the capstone was already there they they actually they actually put the stones underneath it um and the other thing as well is it's not this is slightly different from the irish examples this is this is looking um this is looking down on it it's actually there's a double chamber underneath uh, and if you go under, if you go there, um, probably about a month ago, you'll see a, um, a frogs were laid. Fro There's a pool underneath now, so frogs. It's a place. It's a, a frog pool. Uh, frogs would, um, um, uh, yes, a frog oh. pool. Spawn. I couldn't get. Sorry, Pete. Uh, I had a grey moment there, an, an elderly moment. Uh, they, they spawn underneath there. Sorry, I couldn't get my words out. So you can fry frogs underneath there. It's great. It's all boggy underneath anyway. It's a quartz conglomerate capstone. So this comes from quite some miles north. It's it's a, a it's it's from it's from north. The stone itself uh, is hundreds of millions of years old, and it weighs right. This is the point. It weighs twenty five tons. This this weighs. This weighs 150 tons. So I, I think we can probably guess that this is the same process of this. This is 25 tons, 150 tons. Even if this is 100 tons and they got the weight wrong, it's still four times 
there's the, 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 the four times the weight of this. This should actually weigh more than this because this is a, this is a quartz hardened conglomerate. Anyway, we're not going to go there. So the stone, this stone itself, this stone itself, it, there we go. It's sloping at the back or um, well, sloping at the north or whatever it is. Uh, this is 13 feet. This is um, 13 feet wide, or and it's basically. Um, it's off the ground. It's seven foot high. So you could probably go underneath it, stand underneath it. But, you know, um, it was once larger than this. And it's likely that, that it was it was another 10 tons bigger. Um, so you can imagine, Peter, right? Um, it, it, it's, you know, what were the stones that held that up? You know, it, it, it's obviously balanced. Various theories exist as to why this piece broke away. Now, they, I like this theory. I can remember doing this. Um, some say a miller chipped away at the, the rock to make a new millstone, but the piece was too heavy to move. Others say it was a violent storm, um, and there's lots of theories to do with druids and other things, or it, it was just naturally damaged due to frost action, or it may have been done in antiquity. When we think about it, again, there's erosion occurred to this stone over 5,000 years, and when we think about um, this, this may have been bigger as well. Well, obviously it would have been bigger because it's been there for like 6,000 years. Something's eroded away. And can you imagine people may have been breaking bits off it? Like we think that this would have been perfect for grindstones, for, for uh, millstones, right? That, that's what we're talking about. Um, so let's look at a little bit more detail about this. Let's just keep changing the, the images. Uh, this is looking northwards, I think. Uh, the size of the capstone impressed ancient ancient tribes so much that Mine Keti was once referred to as one of the three arduous undertakings accomplished in Britain. Arduous undertakings. They were thought at that stage that this had actually been moved. But, ra ra but raising the capstone onto its stone supports may not have been quite as arduous as it appears. The glacial boulder was likely deposited um, quite naturally, precisely where it now sits. Oh, we're giving it away. Workers then created the chamber beneath it by excavating below the massive boulder and placing the supporting stones as they dug, so no heavy lifting involved. This theory has come, come to us by the likes of, again, Francis Lynch, a wonderful prehistoric archaeologist from North Wales. Still, it remains an impressive tomb, uh, whatever way you look at it. You know, um, these people had the brains. You know, they, they had the brains to do this. They, they're not lying to us. It, it's like, you know, you know, when you go to a card trick and there, there's something with a card trick, it's like they, they do something quick. It's not exactly magic, but it looks like magic. So this looks like magic. Um, impressive. It, it, it attracts thousands of visitors a year. And we know that it's been visited for 500 years because on the 7th of August in the year 1485, what happened, Peter? They landed um, in Fishguard, right? Um, um, to march um, to... Mill Bay. Yes. Is it Fishguard or Haverford West, Peter? Have I got the right location? Um, well, Mill... Um, it was that, that more out towards Dale. Oh, don't Behind confuse Dale. us, Peter. What? Don't confuse us. Anyway, was, just, uh, go on. That was Henry who marched to uh, to Bosworth Field. Exactly. And interestingly enough, Peter, is that one notable uh, Breton soldier marching to the Battle of Bosworth managed to make a detour, a 60-mile detour to visit this stone and managed then to join the army again. So uh, you, you can imagine that, can you? By the way, folks, I got a detour to see a stone on the Gower. Yeah, okay, fair enough. And he wrote about this stone in his work um, on the way to uh, Bosworth. So when you think about it, if it's a 60 mile detour from the, the route march uh, that Henry took to Bosworth, um, that if, this, if, if, he had a, if he was riding on a horse, this would probably be taken about two days to get there. Then he would have to row back to the line. And he managed to get the Battle of Busworth, nevertheless. Various legends have, have, have been, there's associations with King Arthur. King Arthur, while marching to the Battle of Camlan, found a pebble in his shoe 
and he tossed it a great distance. And this was the pebble um, of, of King Arthur. There you go. Uh, interesting enough, Pete, right? If you do go there again, another colorful tale tells of how the stone travels down, down to the sea each day to quench its thirst before returning to its spot near the ridge of Kefin Bryn. And there's water still there today. So maybe if you drunk of the water, um, the intentions of a lover, Peter, will make themselves known and you'll have to marry them. <laughs> so watch out, Margaret. Right, okay. This, this itself, this stone itself, uh, it is, is basically um, the epitome of interpretation or misinterpretation. Well, one, one, of, the things, one of the things with this stone is that um, what I am going to say is that the feat of placing the stones underneath it, the actual knowledge to be able to do that anyway, is probably the same as moving the stone anyway. The, these people thought, right, OK, we've got a stone there, right? We know that if we put a stone here, it's not going to collapse on it. You know, another stone here. Well, they they had they had the knowledge to be able to do that, and I think that that is brilliant in itself. And and I I really believe that the people who did this um, obviously need the respect and the understanding that they 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 created something massively and hugely impressive. Oh God, I've I've I've, I've worn myself out. I want some nuts. I really do. I, I want some of my bolty mix. In fact, I want some of my um, ginger ale, right? So I think what, what oh, Baldrick's there. He, he wants me to put him to bed. So um, in you, Baldrick, in you. There we go. He's there. Right. OK, he's calling me to uh, put him into bed. So um, um, I'm going to I'm going to we'll do tinkers with barrel chamber after the break. Um, and and what we're going to do now, we're going to. Um, Oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. We're going to have a break. Um, you'll, you'll never guess that I love my turkey. Uh, right. OK, what there's somebody put with, some... We're saying you're done your stuffing. We'll be stuffing there. We'll be stuff, doing the stuffing with you, Peter. Uh, Margaret's put something on notes. How do they work out the weight of the capstone? It's done through volume, my dear. And Andy's, um, Andy's answered it. Length, width, height. Known density of material will give you a fairly accurate estimate. I believe the one on the I believe the one on the Gower Arthur Stone is bigger than they, they they're saying. Um, it, 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 it's I, I believe it's a lot more. You know, I really do. If you want to compare it with the one in Ireland, right? So those online uh, will be taking a, a quick break in, in a few moments. It'll be like a 10, 15 minute break, or maybe more like just over ten. So Peter, anything you'd like to say, babe? No, no, that, 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 that being left there after glacial action seems to be the only real answer to it. Mm -hmm. And but the fact that they dug beneath it and put the uh, cap, the, uh, the, um, the stones to uh, support it, they were, they were put underneath as each one as, as before the actual um, void was dug. They dug the hole, put the stone in, and then dug the rest of it out. But then again, Pete, it's still a massive achievement. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. So, uh, okay, Pete, um, I'm going to ask, is there anything you'd like to say, David? No, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and, uh, me and David want our cup of tea, so we'll be having a cup of tea in a moment. Right, um, Anne, anything you'd like to say? Well, yes, there were obviously really great problem solvers that they yes, have got they this problem to do. Um, probably I would be, I find it interesting to, up to what can I say? It's it, the difficulty often is in, I think, going back is to know their reasons for doing it. Obviously, they had a good reason, else they wouldn't have put so much effort into it, you know. So, um, but it's that's that's hard to understand quite what their reasons were. But, I mean, building burial chambers don't have to be quite that. Uh, <laughs> Strong, do they? Really? Uh, and you know what? And you know what? You know what? And sorry, but sorry to interrupt. You know what? And th th that's exactly what I've been saying. You can't just have this idea that they're just burial chambers. You know? It, it, yeah. I, I'm glad you're you're signing into that. Yeah. Yeah. I, you don't all, always have to agree with me, everybody, but I, I'm glad I'm glad we're making progress with that because that that's very important for to expand our minds. When you 
But when you go to these sites, they can be bloody damn boring if you read the signs. <laughs> if you if you ignore the signs, when you one thing that really frustrates me is when I when I take people to these places and they read the signs and I say, don't read the signs because I want to tell you this. And then they say this and I say, this is why I'm telling you this, because mm -hmm. then you can look at the signs. Uh, and it's really frustrating when you take people to these archaeological monuments and they look at their phone and they look at more information and say, why the <laughs> hell am I here in the first place? So, yeah, Anne, expand your mind. This is what we're doing. Thank you very much. Uh, Andy. Sorry, I just switched off. Um, no, that, that process of uh, putting the stones underneath is the process they use today if you have subsidence and underpinning buildings. You just dig out a small place, put some secure place in and then move on and do another bit and another bit and another bit. It, like you said, it still requires skill. Yes. You know? And I find it a bit worrying that uh, there's a, a pool underneath that other one because that'll make all the ground soft and mm -hmm. it will be subsiding. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. And the other thing as well is, Andy, you just, you, something that I've never um, seen in my reading, uh, Andy, is that um, how do we know this was all done on a Wednesday afternoon? What, what, if we, <laughs> what if we did this over a long period of time? Andy, yeah. subsidence, we need to put another stone underneath. Yep. subsidence we need to put another stone underneath that's why there's that's why there's a, more or less a dozen underneath it you know what i mean you don't need a dozen stones that, that's well, a good thing the stones were, were go down to the bedrock yeah well you could say that but it is very loose stone there it's very mixed um oh. and seeing as you've got water there there has um, to be a bedrock at some clay, point it, there might be we don't really know these answers to these peter no. you might be right andy might be right but you've got to think subsidence may have played a role mm -hmm. in, in the area if you go there it's all loose rock it's it's like the the you know Catherine Bryn is it, there's lots of loose loose rock there you know so um right okay thanks for that um okay Baldrick I'll put you to bed in a moment right mm -hmm. Pat, anything you'd like to say she's oh. right okay then uh, she's done a runner yeah <laughs> Trina, if you're out there, we're, we're loving you. We're taking a break now, so you can fast forward if you're watching this on record. Everybody on YouTube, we're gonna we're gonna um, have, have a little break for ten minutes. I'm gonna put a Baldrick to bed with his girls, um, and uh, I'm gonna um, oh, and I've got to do a little bit of research. You can hear him now. So um, we're gonna take a bit of we're gonna to take a break. It's it's eight fifty. Uh, we'll try and be back just after the hour. And I'm gonna get my ginger beer um, with a with a glass. I'm gonna eat, eat my Balti mix. And I'll see you in a moment. Look at that. Can you see that? What is it? That's where I was yesterday at Kirk's at huh? <laughs> I know's Pass. Oh, God. Loads and loads of glacial boulders. That's yes. like a ready made um, dolmen, isn't it? Uh, Just it the, the thing is, that, that, that's the point. That's the point. We went down to we went to we went to Dartmoor and we saw Brown Willy, right? Oh. And basically, it's it's a stone that looks like it's been placed on stone, but it, it's it's just been a way it's been eroded, my dear. Yeah. But it's just been a way it's been eroded. So you, you, do get, you do get natural phenomenal. And the other thing as well, Barbara, sorry to Barbara, uh, Magra, yeah. sometimes our ancestors were replicated in what they could see around them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there you go. Of the landscape up there was full of these massive glacial boulders. And, and, well, and, all, they would have been all over the country, wouldn't they? Exactly, exactly. But we are going to take our break now, um, and I'm going to I'm going to put Baldrick to bed, otherwise he's not going to be happy.
God, I got, I got, I got some work to do now. I got, to, I got to get that thing in Ireland. Not in Ireland. I got to get, uh, I got to find the medieval find. I'm going to show you. Um, oh, the medieval find is on my, is there. So I got that to show you. Uh, what else? Um, what else was I going to do? Um, right, I got to double check something on my phone. I don't have a break, unlike you guys. I just got to do all this stuff. Right. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. right, so we want to do. Oh my God! Uh, what we're doing? What we're doing? What we're doing? Uh, we've got to do. Um, Carlisle. Carlisle Roman Vile. Carlisle. Carlisle. Roman Vile. Where is this 10 minutes behind? Wow. Uh, Oh, that, oh my God, that's just love. Oh my God, that's love. Oh my God, look at that. Oh God, this is so sexy. Oh, look at those hairpins. Oh my God. I hope nobody's listening to this. Right, okay. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm, 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 I'm the Ataglios, God, and you got to see these. <laughs> Why haven't we done these before? Right, okay. Um. We're just going to do a little bit because otherwise, you know, otherwise we're going to just do a Roman fest. Right. OK, so I've got that. Uh, got that. Uh, nope. I hope we don't press any wrong buttons like go on to any dodgy sites. Right. OK. I'll become a bus conductor. Uh, I, B Baldrick's a bit confused with his with his uh, new, three new turkeys. Actually, we've done this before. Oh. Right, okay. Okay. Got that there. Um, and what else was it? Oh, I've done it all. Oh. Right. Hmm. Okay. Just getting darker than me. Mm-hmm. 
Christ almighty. Right, okay, nearly done. I thought that will do. Right, I, I gotta get the uh if I if I had a chance, David, you could share some of my uh uh my ginger ale. It's all gone dark now as well. Right. I, I gotta get I gotta get my Balti mix out. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen this, Pete? Is it spicy? No, I can't say I have. No. It's mass. It's massively spicy. Yeah. It, it's oh. you've got to have a a, a a bent for it. All right. No, I'm not. I'm so, not into spice. So some some are some are really bad qualities. I'm I'm I've got I'm I'm getting like a a thing for them. So uh, yes. Mm. I don't, uh, I don't like anything too spicy. Yeah, well, you're from Cornwall, aren't you? You you have you have your bloody uh, you have your cream you have your cream on the um, scone. Uh, yeah, and pasty, got a little pasty. Well, yeah, you can get spicy pasties, Pete. Well, we all put salt and pepper in the pasty. Which do you think is the most popular takeaway in Britain? Do you think it's um, Indian food, Chinese, fish and chips or pizza? I guess pizza. I think it's I think it's Indian curry. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I would like to say it's fish and chips. Yeah, <laughs> I like the fish and chips. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always wondered with the curry thing, though, whether it was because they just call them all curry, which, of course, they're all different dishes. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you can't beat good old fish and chips, can you? Oh, no. We're very lucky. I'm in a good fish and chip shop here, aren't we? It's very they're good. They're not yeah. always. No, some, sometimes the you know, you go past a fish and chip shop, some of them have awful smelling oil. Looks like yeah. little twiglets, Carl. Oh, no, they, this is actually gorse flowers. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it can be it. Yeah. Is, it, is it something like Bombay mix? Yeah, it what, will be. Not the gorse flowers? No, gorse. no, no your, no. your mix. Hang on a minute, we're doing gorse flowers a minute, love. Oh, oh no. I beg your pardon. Uh, I thought you were... I thought you were no, 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 I got out the gorse flowers. Oh, you're, basically. you're eating gorse flowers. Okay, yeah. That's yeah, fun. yeah we, 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 sell, we sell it uh, about, um, about yeah. uh, nine pounds a pint. <laughs> We've got loads of gorse growing on the knot here. Is our gorse yeah. the same as yours? Plenty of it around here. It, it, might taste it might taste differently. Um, I didn't know you could eat it. Right. Okay, I'll describe. I'll describe the Balti mix taste now. Right, hang on, mate. Uh, hang on. There, there we go. Uh, mm. Has it got raisins in it? Some of them do. I don't. This what, did you, what did you say that one was called that you'd got? And is it oh. similar to Balti mix? Yeah, it is a Balti mix. Oh, the, oh um, it is a Balti mix, right? Yeah. It's, it's a savoury Indian one. Yeah. I absolutely love it. All mm -hmm. nice. used to be used to eat in golden bread and cheese. Oh! <laughs> I just have an. Uh, um, just, yeah, all thornleys. And guess what? Guess what? I was made the other day, right? Somebody made me nettle burgers. They were gorgeous. Yeah, they would be. Did gorse grow 6,000 years ago? No, it's a native species of Britain. Is it? Yeah. So the hunter-gatherer people would have eaten it. Yeah, and they would, yeah. they would have eaten the green soft tips on the end. Would they? Yeah. Do you eat the green soft tips at the end? No, but Beautiful. I'm going to put my try. Is Hang it? on, I'm going, to, I'm going to try it. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I was I was walking through some filthy all lots of gorse bushes and they looked so pretty. They are. I thought you know they could. They, I, I was wondering that they've never been used as bridal. Uh, you know, might have been in times gone by when people were just gathering what they could. 
rather yeah. than having to buy it from shops. It looks so pretty. It and it could, would have looked lovely as a, just as to carry as a bouquet. Yeah. Really if you look at a dandelion. Hmm? A dandelion. Mm. Oh, yeah. they're lovely. Dandelions are lovely, aren't they? Really? They are. They're and also, also, if you grind down dandelion root, you can make a nice coffee. And look at that oh, there. Yes. That is, well, that's that dandelion is the end. burdock. During that's the war, right. that's what they use as coffee. Yeah. Are you going to eat what, that? Are you going to eat that? Hang on a minute. This is this is tips of gorse, gorse right? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure it's safe? Hmm. Is it? Oh, it's quite. Hmm. It is nice, mind you. I've got a bit of spice in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and what we're going to do? We're going to do a bit of ginger ale now, and we're going to get started. Right. Y here we go. <clears throat> uh, uh, hang on, I've got a ginger. Hmm. Oh, that is good stuff. <laughs> Oh. oh, that is very good. Not not bad, a bottle for 20 pence, is it? No. no. Right, okay, we're going to get started again now. Um, we've still got six people online, so that's good. Uh, Pat, Pat, where's Pat? Hmm. I think Pat's dissolved into a chair. Right, <laughs> let's carry on. Oh, by the way, oh, do, do you want to do the um, do you want to do the two articles first? Right, okay. Um, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to um, yes, I, I, I'm I'm gonna show you. I, I'm it's, the light isn't brilliant at this minute, but I'm gonna show you. Uh, this is a medieval. Okay, this is a medieval strap end, and you're very lucky to see this because nobody has seen this in in 25 years. Um, so here we go. That there is a medieval strap end. Oh, it, mm -hmm. it's dating. It, it's dating from. It's dating to around fourteen hundred, which is mm -hmm. around the precise date uh, that the Battle of Cowbridge took place, which was near a medieval village that I fully excavated uh, in the nineteen nineties, and uh, I'm starting to go through the research material to actually get get this published. So. This, this is actually uh, this this is actually the record card for the artifact and uh, the research card. So obviously more about this uh, again, but we I might put a photograph of this in a listing pillar. So there we go. Anyway, I, I've got I've done two little bits of research before we get on with the rest of the lecture now, which we're going to do. Um, and the one bit the one bit is the Roman bath baths. Um, and the other thing was the other thing that I, you asked me to look at last week. Uh, so we're going to do both now. And uh, so here we go. We're going to look. Uh, we're going to go as follows. And uh, let, let's get onto the screen. Um, and. Right. Share. Um, and we're going to do a screen. We're going to do that there. Um, and we should go there. We're going to go there. Um, and we are going to go there. This was what I, 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 I not, we've not done this at all. And I don't know why we haven't done this at all. I think Andy mentioned it. 31st of January, 2023, Carlisle, Roma baths, gems recovered from drains. And look at that detail. These, mm. these are actually these are actually insects. These these are oh. these are uh, um, itaglios for rings. Mm. These usually ended up in drains in a bathhouse. Absolutely beautiful objects. Uh, more than thirty semi-precious uh, stones lost in a Roman bathhouse two thousand years ago have been recovered from its drains. Uh, the remains of the bathhouse were uncovered in in two thousand and seventeen, as Margaret said. Archaeologist Frank um, Gecko um, said the beautiful gems probably fell out of bathers' signet rings and were lost down the drains. More than 700 finds, um, including pottery, weapons and coins, have been uncovered. And there is the bathhouse as it's been excavated. No, no, the one thing I say about the one thing I say about Carlisle is there's very little in the rain, very little in the way of remains from Carlisle to be seen, but obviously it's still underneath the surface being excavated. Um, and there we go, said the project had received more funding, 
was planned at the site in May. I do believe Margaret said that's taking place now. So we've got um, artifacts made of amethyst, uh, would have dropped out of the rings as the glue keeping them in place was affected by the steam of the baths. Uh, the engraved gems known as Itaglios are only a few millimetres in diameter and ended up being flushed into the drains when the pools and saunas were cleaned. Um, they are beautiful miniature pieces of art dating back around 200 years um, AD. Uh, a number of hairpins, also in good condition, were also recovered from the drains and it is hoped all the finds will eventually go on display in Carlisle's uh, Tully Museum. Uh, there we go, these are the pins. These really nice little hairpins. Mm. Um, these have obviously been lost down the drains as well. And as we as we close on this little thing there, we've got there's the Italic Italios. Absolutely beautiful. You've got a figure of some kind of a, a god on the left, uh, and you've got the Imperial Eagle there as well, or, or with, with the other uh, Italio. So the one's got to be amethyst, and is is the one on the right? Um, is that going to be uh, amber? Mm. I think that's amber because there's impurities yeah. in it. Yeah. yeah, there's impurities in that. That's amber. So, um, all right, let's crack on. And uh, one of the things I, one of the things I was going to, one of the things I was going to do in a little bit of detail today uh, was that some of you in Carlisle will know of this um, great um, Erswick burial chamber. <clears throat> yeah, you know of this? Yes, I thought you yeah. would. Now, we're not going to really do this in detail tonight, but it, we're obviously, um, are we going to do this this week? And are we going to mention it? Um, and I, I just thought, right, we'll, we'll show you an image. Uh, it's near, um, it's, this is near Orbiston, isn't it? So, yeah. um, and it uh, basically, uh, here we go. It's difficult to spot from the road, but soon we've reached uh, a, a likely looking gate with a public footpath. And they're saying, the cross in the field, we soon reached a, a stile over a stone wall with a slope on which the burial chamber stands be, behind it. The burial chamber is cunningly concealed by a tree. Um, we're not going to do much more about this because why not we actually, in the pandemic, we actually did burial chamber. We actually did a, le we, we actually did a, a separate lecture, which probably none of you knew about. Uh, we did burial chambers of Orkney, Cumbria, Cornwall, and Cymru. And this was one of the sites that we looked at. Some people actually believe that this isn't actually a real burial chamber. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow you to go off and do your own research on this and come back to me next week. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get back to the rest of the lecture. Um, and we're going to, um, we're going to, there we go. Uh, we've already mentioned this, as, as we know. Uh, this is our um, Arthur Stone. And the next one we're going to look at is one that I know a great deal about because I've visited there um, probably about 100 odd times in my lifetime. Um, probably more it's Tinkins with Burial Chamber and, oh, hang on, we, we've gone back again. Uh, Tinkins with Burial Chamber, for those that don't know where Tinkins Wood is, uh, it's, oh, hang on. Oh, there we go. There, hang on. There's Tinkins with Burial Chamber. These slides got a bit mucked up. There it is. Near Cardiff. And what we are going to do now, we're going to go back again to Tinkers with Barrel Chamber. Now, we've mentioned this site quite a lot, and, and I really don't want to go into massive detail about it, uh, which is probably um, probably knock down Pat and um, Peter Street, because they probably want me to do a little bit more about this. But we, we do cover it in our Wednesday morning talk quite a lot. But I'll do a little bit. And this, there's a different theory about this completely. And this, that's not that. This is this, right? And we're not going to show you all the plans and all the other stuff that goes into this. Um, and lots of the plans of this site um, are relatively inaccurate. And I don't want to do that today. But it's situated in now a wooded grove. Well, the wood um, of the trees... Uh, that this is sat amongst didn't exist 50 years ago. So that's irrelevant. But this is known as a Cotswold 7 type chambered tomb. And as I've already said, I don't like using those terminologies because they really don't make much sense. The site consists of a rectangular mound 
uh, which may have been 40 metres long and may have been 20 metres wide, but there's lots of changes being associated with this. Um, we're not going to talk about that little mound behind because that those stones are from the excavation, not a separate mound. There's a hollow there anyway. But this itself, as there it is, it's got a massive capstone on top. Now that bit there, directly in front of us, that has been broken away. That that's that's um, um, it probably meant that this capstone may have been in excess of 50 tons, up to 55 tons in weight. It may have been up to 60 tons, right? But this is still half. This is still a, um, a third of the size of the one that we've seen in Ireland. So. The move, the, the, the way that this got there is very different from the other two examples, the, the, um, the, the example in Ireland and the one on the Gower. Now, this itself is held up with stones from, um, it <laughs> probably may have been all sides at one time, but there's also a theory that I've got is the south side, which is there, may not have had stones there at all but that's another talk what we're really interested in is the stone itself so th there's like a forecourt in front right we'll see this forecourt repeated when we look at another site in Ireland that we're going to look at um, in a few moments and the other site on the Gower which we're going to look at in a few moments so this is this is typical this, this sort of way that this is formed but lots of what we can see on the left and the right has been reconstructed. So back to this capstone. So this capstone uh, um, measuring around seven meters in length, right? So that is seven meters in length. That gives you an idea of the length of it. It's uh, um, 4.6 meters wide. It may have been five meters wide at one point. There are various estimates for the weight. Some people put it as low as 40 meters. Other people put it as high as 60 meters, but it's undoubtedly 50 meters in weight. Well, I say weed meters. No, I meant tonnage. God, one of you should have corrected me. Stand again. God, I got too excited. 50 meters, right. Forget about what I've just said there. I got myself confused because I was just doing meters, right? So it's up to five meters wide at one stage, right? Some people believe it was 40 tons in weight. Other people believe it was 60 tons in weight. Um, I believe it's somewhere between 50 and 55 tons in weight. So it's again, one third the weight of the 150 tons of the stone that we've talked about in Ireland. And this is twice the weight of the one on the Gower. It was excavated in 1914. And we know that there were up to 50 individuals that had been seen to be deposited underneath. Uh, bits of long bone, bits of human skull, and so on. They also found various animal bones, flint tools, and pottery. And the pottery wasn't Neolithic pottery. It was obviously from a later date, indicating that this had been used um th this had been used for a very long period of time the date of this stone and when it was erected is about six thousand years ago which is which is exactly the around the same time as the one that we've looked at in ireland now this is known as castle carrig which um is otherwise known as witch's castle um, Carrigan, Cas Casteth Carrigan, which is castle. There's various legends associated th with that that we don't really need to do now. But this capstone itself has intrigued me for a very, very long time. At one stage, um, pe some people used to think that the capstone had travelled a distance of about um, eight kilometres to be here. But the actual reality of this is that the stone itself comes from just over 50 meters away from a quarry nearby. We know it came from a quarry nearby because the shape of the quarry that has been excavated by archeologists um, directly relates to the size of this stone. Now the quarry isn't very deep. Um, it's likely that the stone was taken out from a southerly direction from this quarry 
um, and it was brought out into the field. And then by a system of movement, it was placed directly on top of this, on top of the stones that you can actually see there today. So a completely different process from the way the other stones were erected at our example on the Gower. Now, not, um, when we look at this, we can actually see, uh, it's likely um, that on the left-hand side of the screen, that's facing south, which again, is just over 50 meters away from the quarry. Now, it's very likely that there's a bank there um, and the stone would have been moved over, the pro over a process of a few months to actually go up a bank to actually then be deposited on top of the um, standing stones that you can see there today, otherwise known as orthostats, uh, osoliths, uh, upright stones that supported the capstone. Now, it's very likely that this stone would have been placed there in the summer months, because if you try and move a stone up a bank of earth or gravel or stone or timber, it's going to undoubtedly slip. So it's very likely it was moved there in the summer months. It may have actually taken up to a year to be to have been moved. But as we know, um, over a period of time, you, you would be able to move this. Uh, but definitely not over um, eight, eight kilometers because the quarry is very nearby. But nevertheless, may I say that moving a stone 50 meters is still a feat, is still a massive achievement within light of the weight. Now, um, you know, today we would struggle to even think about thinking about moving the stone but they managed to do it they achieved it that's the word they actually achieved it they, they didn't let the landscape control the, the movement of the stone um and this is there for all to see today it's a beautiful monument and but unfortunately like many monuments in history and archaeology the monument has been altered and changed um and mucked around with but again, the stone itself is, 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 I believe, an achievement and, and it's very, well, very well worth a visit. Um, and this is the front court. And we're going to go on to the other two types of monument in uh, other, other site type of monument in a moment. The, the court tombs of Ireland. And we're going to look at one court tomb in Ireland. And um, this looks like it's got a court and Pottswold seven tomb arrangement. So. I'd like to bring in Pete just just for a moment. Pete, um, what are your thoughts about this monument? Because you've actually been there. Well, it's a, it's amazing how they actually they could uh, move that stone from the quarry. Yes. Up to to, to the uh, above those, those uh, <laughs> the, uh, the the supporting stones. Yes. Um, to move it uphill, even it's. Almost impossible task, even on rollers. You have to be so careful, especially if you're rolling uphill, it can roll back down on you. So, that's why it's got to be done in the summer months, yeah. Yeah. But, but it would take the thing, the so thing. much so much manpower and uh, the uh, well, obviously the rollers, etc. The the trees had to be there to perform to uh, serve as the rollers. The, the yes, drums. good point. Good point. Good point. Good point. Um, this this stone this stone is probably maybe too big to use the um, the seaweed movement method and to try and get uh, yeah. probably a ton ton of seaweed up here from the coast. No, it had to be on rollers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll we'll agree with you on that. It's just the, the the size is is a bit more than just sort of having. Um, um, oils and so on, which is basically what yeah. seaweed is. So and long, um, long so, poles to lever as well. Yes, yes. But then again, point. But uh, then again, Pete. The point is, they did move it. And, and oh yes, yeah, they moved it. That that that's the point. Oh, they, they, oh yeah, they, it's there. There's no doubt about that. They actually they actually achieved that, and and um, to their credit, and whether oh, whether it took. 
whether it took them a month or two months or a year, the point is they did it and, and they had the perseverance to do it. Do you know when you were talking about moving this up a move, moving this up a slope? Um, while well, you could actually put blocks in to sort of hold it in place as you start to move it along. There's, there's loads of different ways of doing it, but engineering, they were able to do it massively. Massively, they were able to do it. Um, there, there's well, the another intelligence of the people who did it has to be quite quite higher than we tend to think about for <laughs> of them. Yes. yes. You don't give them the, uh, the benefit of the intelligence, which they obviously had to have, Yes. to carry out that sort of uh, procedure. And foresight, I read, exactly. I read somewhere that the That's kind right. of life they had to live when they were hunting animals and all sorts of things, and they, are, they often needed a lot more intelligence than most of the jobs we do in today's yeah. world. So it's probably, this is an example of what they could do. More than likely, more than likely, Anne, yeah. And, 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 and actually, actually, Anne, right, actually... Um, I, I've, I've been I've been living in West Wales, as you know, and and the the, the house is basically ready, a turf roof, um, suspended floor, you know, proper modern um, um, UPV, not UPVC windows, double glazed windows, and all yeah. the rest of it. So all, all the mod cons. But e even even then, Anne, even then, Anne, in the winter months here, living on a hill, right, um, gale force winds, um, snow, you get snowed in. Uh, you've got to look after animals. You've got to wake up, and you've got to make sure everybody's alive. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, but I've got solar energy lighting. Um, you know, I, I've got I've got a car. Um, I can charge batteries. Um, I've got a battery electric um, gas shower. Shower. I got a shower. But that's that's tech, and it's still hard, right? And it's still hard, right? And I've yeah. got all I've got those mod cons. It's still really hard. I've got all those mod yeah. cons. What it would have been like living in this environment without any of those mod ponds. That's right. When they constantly right. got they constantly yeah. got to find ways to do things where a lot of it's provided for us now. They where I lived as a boy, Go for it. we had no electricity. Yeah. Yeah. We had no running water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had no flushing toilets. But you survived, and you're here with us today. We yeah. well, well yeah. absolutely we did, yes. <clears throat> yeah. And we survived quite well. Uh, my aunt, uh, she, uh, she let the place out for bed and breakfast. And she had a sign by the front gate which said, all mod cons, which <laughs> meant she had a toilet which you could chuck a bucket of water down. <laughs> and actually, yeah. Pete, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, we, okay, then, we, had anyway, a pump then. In the, we had a pump in the kitchen. We could pump up water from a well mm. alongside. And that, that water was supposed to be was really, really good. But yeah. people who knew about it would stop, stop the bus outside and bring their jug in and ask to fill it up with water <laughs> from the well. Oh God! Guest, guest houses used to boast about having hot and cold water, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a kettle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only kettle we had was on the was on the stove. Cold. Yeah, stove. but it's still hot water. What's wrong stove? with you, Pete? What's what? wrong with you? It's still hot water. My, I had no, hot water. My grand, I had hot water. My grandparents' place they used to put it in, a, in the bath, fill it up on the uh, stove. Mm. <laughs> My auntie's um, toilet oh. was half a mile down the lane. She had a great big key to get in, <laughs> 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 and that's just back in the fifties. It's yeah. not long yeah. ago, is it really? Do you know what? I don't know where we've gone with this, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> But these okay. these dolmens with the capstones, yeah, go on. They they weren't just receptacles for the dead. I mean, they would have attracted the living as well, wouldn't they? Back then, they would have looked amazing. Mm -hmm. I, actually, 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 this is ex this is exactly what Anne. You know, um, I, I'll just say this. Anne, Anne said that she took on these classes, not knowing anything about archaeology. Um, I tell you what, Anne, you you've you come on a very very long way and and Ma margaret said margaret um said exactly what Anne said earlier on that these these cannot just be seen as places of burial yeah. they, they they should not be just seen as places of burial do you do and, and um you you agree with me on the uh, um you agree with what i'm saying but 
let, let's just disagree with you on uh, uh, what I'm trying to say. Say you're somebody else, Margaret. Say, actually, Margaret, right? These, these people had, had, had life. They, they live. They, 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 they must have seen these things as more important than the, just death. Life oh, is uh, not just about death. Yeah, this is about yeah. living. It's about visiting these things. This is an achievement. They did these things. They, they, they echoed to the landscape. They, they broadcasted. That they broadcast this this monument, for example, is is broadcasting to the world that that this is something that we achieve. Um, and and this itself, we're we're thinking, for example, you're looking at an achievement of humanity. However, they did it, resting this. We're broadcasting. We're alive. Yeah. Uh, and, and Margaret and Anne, you are completely right. The amount of effort put in to construct these things, it must yes. have had a yes. useful, a, a other useful usefulness other than just burying dead. Yeah. Bingo. It had to be Thank very you. important to them to put to put yes. the effort to making those. I mean, uh, it had to be very important in some ways, which probably we can't ever know. We 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 have to try and think how they would think, but it is hard, isn't it, to. But I think it's a mystery, and it's a it's a wonderful thing to think about. And I think but, but, they're amazing yes. people, amazing but, people. But you're right. What everything what you said. There is two things though, right? People in the medieval period thought they knew what these were for because at this burial chamber they found medieval pottery. People in the yeah. medieval period visited these and and yeah. left pottery. They felt yeah. they knew, but they probably didn't. They had no <laughs> idea because the medieval period, the medieval period is thousands <laughs> away from this thousands of years away from this anyway you know yeah. and it's just yeah. like could it have been used as a storm shelter really, yes, it could, yeah it could, yes. could could have been i mean for, for very bad weather it would have been great wouldn't they to yeah. help oh, yeah used, used for everything and actually actually inter actually used for everything and actually right um Maybe you guys have maybe you guys have hit upon something because we're just gonna we've got to do the other two sites in a moment because we've only got half an hour before ten and we're supposed to be finished anyway. But anyway, <laughs> the point is what I'm gonna say. What I'm gonna say is that isn't don't the doesn't the angle of these indicate um, a specific direction that might shelter you from certain types of winds? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And for the runoff of the uh, uh, rain. and <laughs> If it was flat, rain would come in, but if it sloped, rain would go off exactly. Yeah. Would God, I've... these originally have been under an earthen mound, or are they just too, they're too big, aren't they? Well, actually, actually, lots of the reconstruct, for example, lots of the reconstructions show this under a mound, but lots of the archaeologists now say, why would it need to be under a mound? Why, why would mm -hmm. you need to cover up a stone like this? In fact, if you put a stone like this under um, half a foot of soil, the, the rain will erode the soil away. Um, mm -hmm. You'd need an absolutely massive mound of soil to actually cover this and to hide it forever, right? Yeah. You, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. If we, we, you know, to, to cover, to, if you look at that, if you look at this, if you look at the front, to actually cover this in soil, the, the mound would need to be a meter and it, then it would mm. erode at an angle and it would just make no sign, sense having soil That's on top of it. Right. And hang it on a minute. It wouldn't have been just soil, it would be turf, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, the, the other thing as well is if you put, if you put the other thing, because of the slope on this, right, how would mm. soil stay on it anyway? No. Oh. So, again, you guys are really thinking outside the box, and this is what we're meant to be doing, all of us thinking outside the box. So what I want us to do now, I want us to dive straight into this one, right? You know, you were talking about, this is actually, um, this is actually on the Gower, right? This is, this is very similar to the one we looked at last week, which we can actually quickly see, right? Uh, this is in Ireland, right? And that's where that is in Ireland, right? And this is where that is on the Gower, right? So I want us, I want us to do these two things as a bit of a comparison. And um, and I, I want us to, this is known as Park Cum Long Han. In other words, um, the park in a valley. 
Long Khan. We've got we've got Khan there. Have you noticed the different names? Quite Khan, Dolman, mm. Portal Two, Burial Chamber. Yeah, the loads of different names, but they all mean the same thing basically. This is also known as Park Lebreos Burial Chamber. The Lebreos family were a very mighty, powerful family uh, in South Wales. And I think the Lebreos family may have had estates in Ireland as well, but there's no link there. This is uh, so let's look at the monuments. Um, oh, wrong site. Um, look at basically they, they've reconstructed it wrongly there. Um, uh, this is the little plan for it. Right. When is 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 this how this looks very similar to um, um, St. Lithen, um, um, St. Nicholas Tinkers were burial chambers that we've just seen. Right. But there is no capstone on it. Um, and some people reconstruct it with a capstone. Right. But how are you supposed to put a capstone on that? Uh, there is no signs that there were any capstone on it. That's looking down on it. Loving it. Let's looking down on it. So. This itself, um, they, they use the word Potswold Seven Burial Chamber again. Yeah, we, I don't like using the words. Um, another name for this is Cromlech, a megalithic burial chamber. This, we do believe, it existed around 6,000 years ago in the Neolithic period. And this isn't, this isn't, this isn't far away from Arthurstone. But it's completely bloody different from Arthurstone. This has been completely man-made in an area where limestone is rich. This is a limestone chamber. This is made of limestone. And it survived, it survived um, being completely destroyed by people putting the limestone in the local lime kiln. There's a lime kiln. Um, if, I, if I was a shop putter, right, I would be able to shop put over to big lime kiln, which is nearby. And I think, um, I, I think also um, our learned friend Pat remembers this. This is a trapezoidal tarn, a rubble. Um, and it says the upper part of the cromlech um, uh, was removed. But then again, was it? Um, I don't think it ever was. It, it's 22 metres long by 13 metres wide. Uh, and what we've got is a, a revetted stone around the outside to keep it in. I'm not really sure if that's the original stone wall around the outside. I don't know. Um, and interesting enough, it's got like a, a, a forecourt there as well, as you look down on it. And, and it goes in to to this area. Right. Yes. Uh, you might you might think that this looks like a womb. Right. Uh, it may look like a vaginal opening. Right. Um, but then again. I, I I don't want to go down that avenue because what is interesting to me is the actual achievement. The reasons why and where for all of these monuments, um, whether they're to re represent female anatomy or whether they're simply to represent a place that people are deposited to be exposed to the elements, to be able to be buried for all eternity looking up at the, at the sky as your body is being feasted upon by birds and other animals. It wouldn't take long for a crow to peck your eyeballs out. Um, but then again, you're facing up, up at the, the heavens and you're giving nutrients back to the animals that you may have eaten in life. Human remains had been placed in the pairs of chambers, four chambers, that lead from the central passageway. Corpses may have been placed in nearby caves until they were decomposed when the bones were moved to the tomb. The reason why we're saying that is there's lots of caves nearby. There's there's Cathole Cave, for example. There's Tuthole Cave nearby. Very, um, the, you know, the, these these caves, Cathole Cave is 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 one of the only places in Britain that we've actually got cave art. Right, alongside Craswell Crags and alongside um, uh, Cheddar Gorge, um, but they may have they may have put bones in those caves, but there's no real evidence uh, at that stage whether they used caves to put bodies to decompose. Maybe they put the bodies in them straight away. The cromlech was discovered in 18, 1869 by workmen digging 
um, for Roadstone. Um, it's a bit weird. They could have just gone to the local uh, quarry and just quarried it out. An excavation later that year revealed human bones, up to 40 sets of human rem remains within that chamber. Um, and animal remains and Neolithic pottery. It's, it, you could always assume um, that the animal remains may have actually been part of offerings or maybe the animals just crawled in there and died. Why not? You know, if you're a fox, it's a beautiful place to die in amongst the, the humans that would have tried to capture you and feast upon you in, in, in life. Um, and again, this sort of forecourt here. And, and the reason why I want to do this, because we mentioned, uh, I wanted to make a bit of a comparison with the, with the court, um, um, with, with the court type tomb, um, the court tombs that we mentioned last week. Um, in Ireland, when we were going through all that. So it's likely as well that this may have been used for nearly 800 years. Now, what else could this have been used for other than um, exposing bodies to the elements? But then again, we are, I haven't really explored that. We're, we're talking about lots of the other examples of these sites um, having loads of different uses. And somebody's, so for example, somebody's purported use for a monument uh, would have changed over a long period of time. And we keep saying that in all our lectures. We don't really know uh, the ins and outs of the Neolithic world, the Neolithic revolution, the Neolithic change. Um, however, analysis of the human remains found at Park Cum Long Khan show the people interred in the cromlech continued um, to hunter gatherer um, alongside some agriculture uh, as well. Remember, this is on the Gower. Um, people are evolving to agriculture, hunter gatherer, hunter gatherer, and agriculture at the same time at different rates across Britain. So there's various different things going on. And this cromlech itself, interestingly enough, is in a valley. It's not like the monument at, um, at Arthurstone, which is on the Gower that looks out across a landscape. This, this is in the valley. This is in a gorge. Very, very interesting that. Um, and it is a protected scheduled ancient monument. Um, and it's within a landscape that people have lived within for thousands and thousands of years. A wonderful site. Um, and part, again, of the Neolithic changes that were going in and around this site over thousands of years. What we might do now is we might look at the court tomb, which was the Cregan Devesky um, court tomb in Ireland. Now, Tr Cregan, Craig, sounds very similar to the Welsh word stone. And I'm not really a Gaelic. I don't know anything about Gaelic, so I, I, I don't. I haven't really might not have looked at that translation properly. But so what I wanted to do is compare this site here again with the one in Ireland, and 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 they're very similar. They really are very very similar. And I wanted to do this comparison thing tonight to see how things work and go together in the Neolithic period. And the next site we're going to do is the Kravendavansky tomb in County Tyrone. So there, hang on a minute, um, there it is. It's, it's, up, it's up in Northern Ireland, and uh, County Tyrone, Northern Ireland. And these typically have chambers. Um, as so you've got a little bit of a corridor and it's sort of cellular, it's slightly, internally, the Irish examples are slightly um, different to these, but that could be a passage grave in Ireland, but that's a very different type of monument. But if we if we look at this, that is very similar to that, except some of the, the internal arrangements with those are different from, for example, that. Now, the Craig and Devensky tomb itself is some somewhere that we're gonna turn now. And this is the last site that we're gonna do today. And you never know, we might actually finish before 10. 
Um, and Pat can get to bed on time. So this itself, this site is, is interesting from another point of view. Now, our site, our site on the Gower, right, if you can remember, was actually excavated in 1869, right? So what we were being told in 1869, for example, about our site on the Gower and the evidence collected on how it was put together and so on, which distorts, you know, because they've got their ideas in 1869, right? Our site at Craig and Devensky was excavated at a different time than our site on the Gower. And that has implications for interpretation. And it's, it's that thing, when you're looking at these sites, always, always try to always try to go back and think, well, when was it dug? You know, when, when, when did they dig it? So now, 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 Margaret, we can now understand why we've done the barrow diggers. We haven't completed the barrow diggers yet. We've got a couple more lectures on the barrow diggers, but it, 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 it's that idea of interpretation and people's interpretation of the past um, is, is to be seen in in their world around them and how religion affected the way they excavate sites. And Ireland is no such exception. This very impressive court tomb um, was a peat covered, largely featureless mound and was threatened with removal in an agri agricultural reclamation scheme. When excavated between 1979 and 1982, it proved to be in an almost perfect state of preservation and the owner agreed to its conservation and public access. So can we just say, the problem is excavating the one on the Gower, um, they didn't have the science that we've got today. In 1979, they've got radiocarbon dated, they've got dendrochronology, chronology, they've got some of the other sciences that we can look at. Um, and this is a semi-circular forecourt arrangement at the south east end, leads to three um, chambers um, along, along a trapezoidal part of granite boulders. Again, similar form to our one on the Gower. And the largest stone uh, is a massive lintel over the entrance. So if we, if we look at that, um, we've got there there's the reconstruction and the reason i don't feel easy with the reconstruction it makes me feel sick right doesn't the reconstruction doesn't feel right and the reason why the reconstruction doesn't feel right is if we go if we go to what this says right um it it was a mound covered in peat um and nobody knew it was there um so why would it have looked like this in the first place um, it, it doesn't make sense. It, you know, if you're going to dig, up, if you can dig up these stones, you may as well take the whole thing. Why would it needed? How how do you roof this over? And, and if you cobble it, right? Okay, you can cobble it. Maybe where are the big lintels, right? And if you're talking about this is boulder stone, it's going to be very difficult to put a roof on it. So why do you need to put a roof on it in the first place, right? So um, if we if we look there, we can see this big stone as you enter it. I know it's a bit blurred, sorry. Um, and a big granite boulder. And so what we've got around the outside of this is if we again go to this, on around the outside of this, um, the, the Khan's dry stone side revetment walls still stand to some height and some of the corbel stones of the roof are still in place. They say, um, but there is no corbel stones in place there. Um, I just read it out the description. There are no corbel stones. There's nothing showing a roof uh, except for that boulder there. I'm very suspicious of, of, of what I've just read there. Um, so what, what we've got, we've, this is actually sandstone. Um, and th what, they, what they found in 1979 was a cremated bone representing the remains of at least 21 people flint implements and Neolithic pottery were found during the excavation. Some of the material in the, in the um, court area um, 
offered us some dating evidence and the radiocarbon determination suggests a date of about 3,500 years BC. But there were also signs that this was used later in the Bronze Age. Um, and then maybe um, at that stage, they may have tried to roof the thing over, but there's no evidence to me purely that this had a proper roof on it um, using the materials that they've got available. You can clearly see that the materials that we've got available are small um, and, you know, you, you've got that big boulder there and there's no other evidence for me that it was roofed over. But however, let's forget about the roofing over. This, this is very, very similar in form and shape to our one on the Gower. And it makes me think, it makes me think if these people didn't have any connection, right? It was the type of thing that they built because it suited them and it suited their purpose at that time in history to build these things. Whether there was any links between these builders or not, I think not. But they happened to build this. If this, if, if the one on the Gower is roughly coming up to 6,000 years ago, and this is roughly just over um, 5,500 years ago, right? Um, then there's a bit of a difference in time. However, for me, this tells me that these people like to build in this way at this period in history. And that was the Neolithic period. And this is our comparison this week between this monument and, and, and our other monument, which is here. Very similar ways of building, Neolithic period, in places that were now disconnected from each other by water and some distance apart. So that's where we'll end this today, by looking at comparisons. And I would like to find out if there are any questions. Uh, before, we, before we ask if there are any questions, um, we won't be doing barrow diggers next week. We'll be doing a completely different topic. Um, and I'm not gonna tell you that today. So, are there any questions? And if anyone online would like to say anything, they, they are very, very welcome uh, to say anything online. Uh, I'm just gonna check to see if there is any messages online. Uh, and it doesn't seem that there are. I, I think we've answered them all. So, right, any questions for any for questions for any of us this week? Uh, and other than the fact that the Indiana Jones film is going to be coming out soon, <laughs> looking forward to seeing it. Um, get your whips out, Margaret, and um, and yours, Pat. So, Pat, any any questions you want to ask this week? She's very it's elusive. Pat. Pat. It's, it's amazing. It seems amazing that there's sort of such a variety of these really uh, huge stone constructions, yes. um, and that that so many they were all in different places, so they didn't necessarily have contact. And it's just amazing. It really is amazing to try and understand it. You know, just I, I like think it's. Yeah. Staggering stuff. And, and actually, actually, uh, there is a comment online which is which ties in with what you said. If you if you can read the link, uh, this is from Elise um, online. Um, nice to have you, Elise. Um, he says tech and the finer things in life has definitely dumbed down some folks. Um, and he also mentions uh, what was she saying there is obviously, you know, we we've missed how they were able to do these things. You know. Um, mm. And they worked hard, lived, loved, worshipped, played. Um, I'll take um, their, their beautiful remnants of history um, over the New York skyline anytime. Yeah. Obviously, um, <laughs> yeah. there we go. Yeah. Somebody, somebody from yeah. the United States commenting. Uh, to be honest with you, those, those New York tower blocks will not be standing in yeah. 5,000 years' time. No. They won't. They won't be there. There's no... Uh, you know, they, they, they still won't be there. The things that will still be standing um, is, is are the chambers that we've seen. They will still be there. Um, yeah. The Great Pyramids uh, will be still there. Um, 
and maybe the the eroded bits of the Parthenon. Um, yeah, Cornwall will obviously still be there. I wonder. If, yeah, I wonder yeah, if they. I wonder if the builders had any. You know, like a, some people want a posterity. Um, even you know to try to build something and make it raise a, something for posterity, for, so everybody will know we've been there. I wonder if they've got any of that kind of reasons or you know I, that I, way I, of thinking. I, I, actually, actually, uh, when we look at causeway enclosures, eventually, right? When we look at causeway enclosures, next week is a mystery trip. But then again, you might have causeway enclosures. Uh, but causeway enclosures are basically built so that you can put your ancestors in in pits mm -hmm. um, in a concentric arrangement, and then you can put the skull. Um, on a spike looking out at the landscape looking at you right these monuments are still with us that you could you looked into these monuments from another hillside so mm -hmm. they were on they were dug on slopes you could see them for thousands of years right now they deliberately put them on slopes not on the tops of the hills on slopes right mm -hmm. so you could look into them right yeah now that's for posterity if 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 nothing is then that is for posterity mm -hmm. um you know for example, my my parents say, oh, you know, they, they, they built a house in Cyprus, which my parents did and have and they still own. Uh, and, you know, that that for posterity, you know, we've achieved something, you know, we're going to sell it one day and you can have yeah. all the money and stuff. Yeah. But it's the same thinking, you know, it, it's the same thing. Um, when when Andy's girls are a bit older, he's, he's going to um, buy them all um, a Rolls Royce. Uh, and uh, they, they can say the daddy gave us this. This is, this is for posterity, right? We've all got this thinking. It's there. And why, why couldn't they have had this thinking? Yeah, uh, yeah. And actually, the, the, greatest, the greatest example of posterity is actually Hadrian's Wall. Hadrian's Wall really had no purpose other than the, other than the customs gate. Most of it was never operational. Um, there, were, there were gaps in Hadrian's Wall. There were gateways that were left open. And you're thinking, well, why was this thing built? It wasn't built for a defensive frontier. Why? It was an austerity project. And there it is. <coughs> so, uh, well, that, and, and we've shut ourselves up. Um, right, Pat, anything you'd like to say, lovely? No, no, no. I'm uh, going to get to bed. <laughs> okay, Pat, we'll yeah. see you next week, darling. See you next okay. week. Bye, right, right, Pat. Bye, see you next you. week. Bye. Um, Hi, Pat. <laughs> Hi, Pat. It's great to have you on board. Right. OK, uh, David, anything you'd like to say, lovely? No, thank you very much. Thank you. It's been great having you on board on this trip, David. Good, night, uh, David. Good to see you back Good with night. us, David. Bye-bye. Night-night, -bye. David. Night-night. Yeah. Right, so who, who's left? Um, I'm going uh, Good You're night. going now. Good Anne, night, anything Anne. else you'd like Hi, to Anne. say before you go? Good night, OK. Night-night, Anne. Anne. Thanks for joining us. Oh, my God, that, that was well organised. Uh, this is a, this is like um, the Waltons, right? Okay, I, I, okay. Um, who's next, Margaret? Anything you'd like to say, to Margaret? Well, I thought it was quite interesting what uh, Elise is it online yes. was saying yes. about the like the New York skyline, and um, she much preferred the uh, ancient um, tombs and buildings that we know from six thousand years ago. I yeah. dare say in years to come, when we are no more and nature will have reclaimed, will have climbed all over the skyscrapers. They won't be skyscrapers anymore, but there will be things left. There will be foundations and stones. Yeah. There will still be things there. And you just wonder um, how much more magnificent the prehistoric things that we see now would have been when they were built. Perhaps we're just seeing, you know, the small remains of what My was God. Yeah. much mightier at the time. Yeah. Yes, that's something that none of us has said, or maybe it, maybe somebody may have said, said some weeks ago or months ago. Right? That's something that none of us have said. These things were a lot grander and greater than what we're seeing today, and you are 100% right. Yes, yes. Yes, we missed that. Yes, you are right. Uh, oh, that's, that's put our, uh, blown out of our sails, Margaret, but you're very right. Um, thanks for that. And uh, Peter, anything you'd like to say? Yeah, all the entranceways to those places were almost exactly the same. Yeah. Yes. It is all as if they were built by the same person. Yeah. 
but obviously they weren't. But they are they are so similar. The ones in Ireland to Tinkins Wood to the mm. the the, uh, the ones in other parts of the country, the entrance way looks exactly the same. And they all narrow at the other end, don't they? Yeah, they, 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 they the curve way. in. They curve in, and then there's the entrance way. Yeah. Yeah, can I can I just can I just make this comment right? Um, um, a narrower entrance way is more practical. Um, forget about defence and all these other things. It, it's very practical because um, when you talk about elements, when you talk about nature, when you talk about restricting access, right? All of this, all this comes into um, it, it's called access analysis. I got I got a master's degree in it, but um, but the, but the the fact of the matter is. Um, it, it's it's about control it's about you don't have a wide entrance if you've got a narrow entrance you can put a lintel on it you can sort of say we're here you can control you can make sure that traffic in and out is restricted i know that sounds really bizarre with the barrow chamber but it makes sense to me they're all built in the same way but with the same uh, curves as etc they, they look so similar yeah. each of the yes. entrance ways mm. yes yes and, and, and Elise is communicating with you online, Margaret. Um, <laughs> she says, very true. Thank you, Margaret. You're talking about, you know, the, um, you know, the, the what survived and hasn't. Yeah, that's great. Good. Good. Uh, thanks for that, Elise. And um, no doubt we'll have a message for uh, Andy and uh, Peter before we end, Elise, won't we? Uh, right, OK. Then. Uh, Andy, anything you, you want to say before we finish? Yeah, uh, the um, the... It only seems a bit odd having a restricted entrance because we wouldn't want to go into a tomb. You know, uh, if it wasn't built as a tomb in the first place, if it was built as something else that yeah. actually had to house remains, if it did before then, we're all assuming all these things that they, they, there's a chronology there, but the chronology may be completely wrong. They may have been built as something completely different and then used as a tomb afterwards okay. or you know, a meeting place or whatever. And those two tombs, uh, those two, let's call them tombs, because that's what they're called at the moment, like hill forts. Uh, um, <laughs> the, um, that, that one in Ireland and one in Wales, they're exactly the same shape they are. right, on yeah. the outside, yeah. but not on the inside, ah. right, which is. I think is really quite interesting. That would suggest because they're the state, I mean, you don't have to make them narrower at one end or the other. You could make them rectangular or you could make them wiggly. You could do also any shape you want. The fact that they're the same would suggest that one, some person or persons had seen one or the other first. And that it would also suggest that they hadn't seen the insides because they're different, which would also suggest that maybe they were covered. Uh -huh. I'm, 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 I'm liking that challenge. I'm yeah. liking it. Yeah. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Um, All yeah, I'm grown, liking that. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm liking what you've just yeah. said. Um, you know, obviously, somebody, somebody could argue and, and be pedantic and say, well, you know, there's no, there's no chance that anyone could have seen either. But the, the way you've put that together, that that really that's really nice in, in a sense. Well, that They're, they're geographically outside, quite close as well, aren't they? You know, yeah. so... Yeah. yeah. It, and the other thing as well is, if you go into a dark space like that, you're not really going to understand how it's arranged in the middle in 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 it anyway. Are you? <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm just I'm just thinking that there's another one there. There's you know somebody saw the the the, the first one that was built. Let's say wait and say, oh, they've done it like that, but we don't need to do that. We we can do it this way because they'll never know. <laughs> you know, no one's going to come they and see it. Laid out the interior before they did the exterior, though, wouldn't they? Maybe. Don't you think? Maybe. Do you not think so, Pete? Who knows? Oh. Do you not? No. You think they would have built, built the outside? Yeah. I mean, look, look at we exit. how we build houses today. You can build it with the internal walls no, as you're going along. Or you can build a shell and a modern way of doing it. Just build a shell and then you can move the walls wherever you want, interior. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Or, or, or as I did, I, I had to put the floor in to be able to reach the roof. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, Practicalities, yeah. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. I, I would yeah. just, you know, uh, the, the uh, everything inside was being completely damaged by the elements, but I could not do the roof yeah. before I did the floor because yeah. I didn't have the scaffolding. I didn't have the ability. Um, I didn't have the, I couldn't do it. So I had to do the floor first and then the roof. 
Yeah, no rules there, Margaret. There are no rules. There are no rules. I'm, I'm loving what you've just said, Andy, as a challenge at the end. That's really, really good. I'm liking I'm, 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 yeah, a, a bit I, of I a, can't a, believe yeah. that there's not a connection between those because they're so similar. The you know. same architect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Came out of a design book. Yeah. You obviously want one of them. Build me one of them. Obviously care. not wimpy. God. Don't care what it looks like inside. Yeah. No one's going to see that bit because we've got a narrow <laughs> entrance to stop them going in. <laughs> oh, so good old wimpy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Any Hello. any other any any other questions? Um, we we'll, we'll hopefully we'll have yeah. um, Trina will be back soon, and the other two, and and all the rest of it. And we meant to be having Dell come in from the uh, Wednesday class to us tonight. I don't know what happened, but anyway. Um, oh, Andy, thanks for the shekels, and I do believe uh, it was it you, Margaret, who sent her over. You should have got it today. Yeah. Okay. No, that's yeah. fine. Thanks. For that. So, um, right. Okay. Um, I think we're going to call it a day now tonight. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good night. Bye. Good night, everybody. And, and, and Peter, I will see you tomorrow, Peter. And uh, yes. Margaret and Andy, I will see you next week. Take care. Thanks okay, for joining bye. us. Bye. Take care. Night night. Night night. Night night. Night night. Um, I'm in Liverpool next week, so I'm not sure I'll be able to get in. I'll I'll try and get in on my phone. Yeah. Why are you joining Liverpool? Are you are you are you in Liverpool to? Uh, what are you in Liverpool for? Eurovision. Oh, oh yeah, you're doing the you oh make it you're gonna have stupid people. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm down, I'm down with the coast guard and the on the jet ski again. So, so that I should ask be interesting. you something. Yeah, aren't, aren't the local council elections this week? I I think they are, yeah. I'm I'm a bit worried because I haven't had my voting uh, thing because I'm not actually here on the day of the election and I have yeah, a, might, a postal vote and I haven't had it. So it might not but Westmoreland might you've got new thought new authorities, haven't you? Yeah, we have, yeah. Yeah. Westmoreland it and might, Furnace. It might not it might not be your council might not be No, it is. Election. It definitely is. Yeah. Because I was it? just pushing some of the um um polling stuff through the letterboxes today. It definitely is. Uh, um, I had a phone call today from um, one of my friends. He's a, a does heating engineer, and, yeah. and he was around at somebody's house, at Gressingham Hall. Um, and yeah. the lady wants wants us to go around and look at two sort of large structures she's got in the grounds so that she doesn't know what they are. She said because she was interested in the fact that we had an archaeology group. She said, "Can you come around and you know, say, survey it?" You know. And I'm going, well, yeah, probably. I said, we're certainly really interested to hear. And she said, and I said, oh, and she said, yeah, there might just be, you know, water tanks or whatever. And then she said they were 11 meters square. I'm thinking, that's a bit big for a water tank, you know. So. Fish ponds? Possibly. Could well be. Yeah. But um, they, they say lime kilns. And I'm going, not at 11 meters square, unless you've got your measurements wrong. But, but I said, yeah, that'd be great. Go around and have a chat. So, that sounds great. Get cleared uh, out. Oh, oh, best of luck. Uh, if, if I did, I'd have to charge them. Anyway, yeah. um, where are the elections taking place? Council elections are being held in 230 of England. There's 317 councils on this Thursday. Yeah. Well, I haven't had my forms through. And, and, and also one of my neighbours was saying she hadn't had hers through. I, so I started to think it's a bit rigged. Oh, you won't be able to vote, vote Liberal Democrats? Well, I won't be able to vote, yeah. I won't be able to vote Is, is, Pru, is Prue still doing the council thing? Is who? Prue. Remember Prue? Prue. Prue. She was my solicitor in court. She was a, council, a councillor as well. Prue. Prue, I don't know. Prue. Don't know Prue? Oh. No. No oh, Prue. Oh, I don't know. No, anyway, well, I don't know a Prue here. No, sorry. Oh right, okay. So, so I basically I want to know about the council elections because I'm a I'm a council I'm a um, election geek. Um, yeah. I like the results coming in, and 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 the Donald Trump ones were so amazing that day. It was just like right, yes. okay. It, yeah, but they, it, don't, it was, they don't do that though with with the regional ones, do they? They kind of just, you know, half of them don't come until three days later. No. Oh yeah, well we'll 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 have to see how it goes, eh? God. What well, that those what I was gonna say about those um burial mounds as well is what I don't understand is why they oh, made yeah. them so big. You've got all that stone or whatever area 
that doesn't yeah. appear to have been used for anything. And, and they won't have built that for nothing. They have That has to have purpose as well. You know? um, you're not going to buy ancestors, are you? How, how do you mean? Well, obviously, the ancestors occupied the earth and space. And if you if you look if you look at I think the the um oh god oh okay. you know I just I hadn't I thought about much, that yeah. yeah but if you know, when when you think about when you think about oh Passage Grave in Ireland New Grange like um less mm. than one tenth of it is taken up with burial or with supposed yeah. burial yeah one tenth when you think about it right okay New Grange there's a long passageway going to three cells at the end or out of many cells right yeah um and it's like well the passageway can't be for burial because it's not for burial. Yeah. What is the passageway about? It's so bloody long. Um, Mind you, the yeah. pyramids are exactly the same, aren't they? And the, massive, yeah. massive constructions with very small burial chambers in them. And then we wonder, were they burial chambers in the first yeah. place? Yeah, exactly. And then, oh, we've just found another one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, inside them, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I uh, wish uh, I, it'd be nice to think one day we might be able to work these things out or find out, but I don't know. Even even if we did have an answer, it wouldn't be the answer because uh, you know somebody would say, "Oh, but we used ours for something else." Yeah, oh, well, exactly. I'm really to do that, but yeah. I mean, like, our yeah. theory was this, and you're saying it was used for something else. Oh, well, that's really great. We had barbecues in ours. Yeah. Look <laughs> at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, totally it's very it's very difficult it's a very difficult um place to be but i think the place to be is not to be too argumentative and i gotta be honest with you right um Anne and margaret as, as people into archaeology i'm sure if you chuck them in 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 a in a um archaeological conference hall now right uh they, they could take on some archaeologists yeah definitely it's good to question because these are all things; these are always things that are assumed, and assumption is always flawed, you know. Exactly. Uh, and if you, you um, put too many assumptions together, you end up miles away from reality. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're, we're asked with too many things. And next week, the reason why next week I needed to develop this um, part of next week was about this um, uh, submerged world in Cardigan Bay. I want to put that together. Oh, yeah. Next week. Terrific. Yeah. Well, it's only going to be part of next week. Next week's mm. going to be a bit mixed, like we've been doing. So, Oof. anyway, Bye. okay. Sorry, I I'm got delayed good, with that I'm one. Say good night. What's that, Margaret? Oh, Margaret, Andy. <laughs> Margaret. Margaret. I've got a beard and bald. Yeah. <laughs> well. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. 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 The, the the meeting. It was a coast. It was a coast guard meeting because we're going on Thursday about logistics and organisation and security and things. You know. And uh, these, uh, it was supposed to finish at half past seven. I thought, oh, that's great. I'll just switch from one to the other. And then they said, oh, can the jet ski guys just hang on? We need to talk about the logistics of getting it down there and what we're going to do, blah, 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 blah. But that went on for another half an hour. So, I did send a message, but obviously sent it to your old phone. Yeah. Uh, well, I well, I still look at my old phone. I'll probably get a message today, but uh, yeah, <laughs> should have right. sent it to this one, yeah. yeah. Oh, don't worry, it's fine. You got it on me. It was good. It was good. It was good. Jolly good. All right. Well, hopefully, okay. I will try and see you tomorrow, uh, next week. Yeah, and let me know how you're going with the with the digging at Woman's Garden. Oh uh, yeah, I won't be doing that for a bit yet. But uh, I said it'll be a while because I have to arrange with Claire when we can go down. Okay. But, uh, but okay. she's not in. She's not in any hurry. She said it's not going anywhere. <laughs> I thought no, that's good. I'm going to dig no, it all up. Next year, exactly. Yeah. All right. Catch you soon. Okay. Thanks. Okay, Andy. I'll speak to you soon. And thanks for your time. And bye now. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. 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 Now it's me and anyone else online. I, I don't know, um, Elise, I don't know um, who, um, if we've got um, Kate still online or whoever else online. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll call it a day in a moment. So um, if anyone's got any messages, please let me know. Um, put them on there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please join. Join button. Um, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to quickly look at the chat box, as I like doing. It's my chat box OTD. So again, uh, Margaret asking how how do they work out the weight of the capstones? So yes, I should, I, did, we did answer that because Andy came in. Andy said length times width times height times known density of material 
will give you a fairly accurate estimate. So um, I didn't reply to that, but we did actually in the lecture. So the estimate being being the final weight, obviously 150 tons, 55 tons, or whatever. Um, so that's my chat box. Oh, hang on a minute. Have I lost everything? Oh, uh, that's my chat box done. So one, two, three chat box over on estimate go. Um, and obviously, this is how we get to the estimates in, in archaeology. So um, I do believe that you are a little bit behind um, on here um, as I'm watching. So again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Anyone got anything, questions they'd like to say now? I'm going to write this. Um, I'm going to put type in um, any, any questions as going in a moment right many questions going in a moment because i'm gonna i'm gonna have some balty next a minute ah. i got a trick on the animals Just waiting for anybody to say anything. before I go. By the way, this Balti mix is great. Right, Elise, and whoever else is there, I'm going to call it a day now. I've, I've munched my Balti mix. And, uh, and I'm going to go. I'm going now. Online tomorrow at 7.20-ish. Wednesday.